All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back. So, back at Ilvermorny, except with a new player, our good friend Matt. Um, welcome, Matt. So, welcome, Matt. <laughs> welcome, welcome. That's been my good friend for a while now, so I'm glad that you did have this opportunity to join us. A friend. A brother. Yes, <laughs> a brother. So, we're on session two of the game right now. We decided that we wanted to um, restart the campaign. We're keeping, the for the most part, the same characters, um, NPCs as well. And we're still at Ilvermorny. However, ins instead of the group being in Wampus, they're now in Thunderbird. So to give everybody a quick, nice little recap, the boys, Arthur Gray, which is played by Jared. That's me, I'm Arthur Gray. Um, Patrice Zalardo? <laughs> no, it's Zalari. Zalari, Zalari. Patrice Zalari coming in. Played oh, by David. David. David over here. And then Matt, a new player to tabletops. However, he's doing really good. He Thank is you. playing, um, wait, wait. He's playing Finn Staghart. Just say hello. Hello. He's a bit shy. For now. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see, him, see him in there. Method actor. Yes. So, quick recap. Arthur, Patrick, and Finn. Pat Patrice. 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 <laughs> Patrice. Just call me Patty. Just call me Patty. Patty, all right. Big Patty. No. So, you Arthur, Patty? Patty, and Finn. They take the balloon over to Ilvermorny from Boston, and they are sorted into Thunderbird. Their NPCs that they've been introduced to so far are Melvin, the sniffly boy with lots of allergies, Kiana, a oh fortune God. teller of some sorts, and Victoria, a very humble girl who's a very big nerd when it comes to learning. So far, things have been pretty rough for the group. They've been having a hard time getting along with each other as well as the NPCs, their fellow students, and a bit of trouble in class. However, they've been leading in house points, succeeding on multiple challenges within charms, transfigurations, and defense against the dark arts. A big moment that happened last session was Patrice led Defense Against the Dark Arts, defeating multiple students within the class, gaining a lot of reputation for Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. The first year uh, Thunderbirds. So, lunchtime just finished. They're on their way to History of Magic. And right now, Finn, a student who has been orphaned most his life, grew up with a uh, sheriff, never really knew his father, just ran into a portrait of his father at the school. So this, this is where we are picking up. So, Finn stops, quickly noticing a familiar face, a familiar figure within that portrait. It's your father, Billy the Kid, waving his wand like a gun, like an old cowboy twirling his gun. Twirls his wand towards the portrait and he holsters it. What does Finn do? That's my daddy. So Where's Victoria stops and she's like, the, points at the portrait. And, that's that's your daddy. Were there? Yeah, I want. I'll notice when Victoria turns and when like, Finn speaks as well, and sort of look at the portrait. It's like, yes, yeah, that's him. Can I, like, roll to see if I know of him just because of my background? Yeah, so story? that'd be a history roll. Okay. So, history. It's a possibility. Is history of magic? Yeah, make sure you roll it on the table. Is a three. I was just going to. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's enough. Fifteen, so eighteen. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Billy the kid. You look at the figure more closely. It's black, jet black, slicked back hair. He's broad shoulders, intimidating demeanor. This guy's got a glare that just puts like, just coward. How it just makes you feel he? like a coward. He, in the portrait, he looks like he's six I'm foot one. Fuck. <laughs> oh, <this guy. laughs> he's six, he's the, the running joke is Finn's shorter than the, the rest of the group, yeah. so... Okay, so... So, you learn... What you know is Billy the Kid was a notorious um, scourge, yeah. which is a bounty hunter yeah. within the U.S. Um, magical world, and he was a notorious bounty hunter for just hunting down other wizards and disposing of them. Okay, I, I want to then go to the front of the group where he is. I'll be like, Billy the Kid is your father, huh? Explains a lot, you know, he's very notorious and definitely wanted for going after other wizards. But it makes sense why he wouldn't want you, though, I guess. Damn. Oh, you better wash your mouth. 
God damn, watch him out. <laughs> I want to I go up to him, and then I'll, I will I want to glance at Melvin, and, you know, just because I know they're kind of been buddies. I want to glance, and then I'll be like, or... So Melvin kind of huffs back some tears. He's like, he's like, or, or you're gonna have to face Finn. F- Finn doesn't even know himself. I think he needs to face himself first. But if you want to know something about your dad, I can fill you in. You know he was a scourge, which maybe if you're not, is known as a bounty hunter, but also known for going after other wizards and just killing them. You know. Not sure about you, but uh, not that great of a man to be a father. Silas Silverthorn approaches the group. You guys hear his boots clinking against the ground. Approaching, he says, That's high and mighty coming from a grey whose father leads Makusa killing innocents. Can I, uh, uh, I'll, the, would Arthur know the policies of Ilvermorny? I'd, yeah. I'd be like, Aren't the policies uh, supposed to not let you make those kind of comments, Professor? Policies also state that teachers are supposed to stop bullying. So I recommend you leave him alone. Fighting fire with fire, I see. Okay. So he says, I don't like your tone. I am I have no tone, Professor. So he shakes his head, he looks at you, he's like, your father was a, he was a good man before uh, he was hired by his father. And he looks at you, he's like, your father hired him to be a scourge and do his dirty work. Don't you forget that, Gray. And he starts to walk slowly away from you. At least he could be proud of something then. Billy or? Billy, for working for my dad. Is he still alive? I don't don't want to start to Silver Thorn. So, Silver Thorn stops. And the serious man, who's always got, like, a, a very serious expression on his face, he looks back, and you can see a glimpse of sadness in his eyes. And he says, unfortunately not. I'm sorry about that, Finn. I, you probably don't have a father to lean on. But don't you worry. We're all boys here. We're all band together. I give Patrice a look of approval and a slight nod. Uh, then I... Then... I ask Silverthorn, did you know him? Silverthorn looks forward and doesn't say anything and just keeps walking. Does he stop? Just keeps moving. I'd like to say to the group, I'd be like, parents come and go. Okay, it's not something to wallow in the past about. Move on. So you say that when your dad raises you. And you get like babied into this position of high authority now oh shit babied I mean I think I'm the only one that actually properly took it while you were all sitting by helpless you can complain you but if you were just riding on your daddy's name is my daddy's name doing anything for me right here no one except Melvin stepped up and see what happened to him you were late and got lost as points you weren't uh, noticeable until defense against uh, dark arts where so, you got your ass kicked by a girl are you being and almost killed us all in the other class I with didn't... the fire Melvin says that's right your wand almost scorched us all yeah and thanks for leading the group Arthur I did when I was helping you Victoria and Kiana as well after I lost my wand you know yeah you that's lost your wand. yeah that is something that lead will have to do you have to adapt to the changes unlike you Melvin walking into a hall where you see all these other students stuck and if we followed you when you wanted to do that we would have been stuck and out as well so you want to talk about my predicament sure i might have screwed up but that happens and at least i can own up to it but don't stand back and pretend like you wouldn't be uh here without me pukwudgie approaches the group you guys recognize her shorter than the rest of the other security pukwudgie she's got blue paint painted on the end of her quills you remember her as sky she looks at you all says what are you? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? Just having a uh, friendly discussion, Sky. Do you guys know class started five minutes ago? Fuck. Oh. Yeah, l- lunch was Where over a bit ago. I guess you guys really wanted. She, she looks at the portrait. She's like, I don't know if you guys are here admiring art or. We're admiring whatever is left of his dad. 
Let's get then, to class, guys. What the fuck? And then uh, I'll start uh, going for class. Ask, uh, I'll turn and ask on, like, quickest way to uh, the class sky. She's like, well, you guys are just outside the Great Hall. Go back into the Great Hall. Come around the corner. There's staircases leading down into the dungeons, into the uh, dungeons level one. From there, you're going to go down a second flight of stairs. The second flight of stairs to dungeon level two. And, uh... This house is magic. Can't we go a quicker way? Persuasion roll, please. Persuasion or no? Probably not. I rolled a one. Okay. Yeah. Plus... This doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Puck Wudgie says, only security get to know the secret ways, student. But two. Plus two. the way I told you is the best way. Yeah. All right, thank then you. I want to then Sky. say, someone please take the lead. I'll start walking, just fucking head down, so, trotting along. As a... Uh, as you... I'll walk through. Okay. I'm staying. I'm looking at the porch a little bit longer. So Victoria stays with you, and you see she's, like, shaking, like, jittery. She's like, we, we, should, we should really go, Finn. We should really go. Yeah, all right. We can go. So you start to walk, and she stops. She's like, what, how close were you with your dad? Didn't know him. She's like, well, you know what? We're already late. Maybe we can admire him a little longer. Is there anything in the painting that would help me? Labels. Yes. He has an insignia on his chest, on his like a little leather panel above his chest. You've never seen the insignia before. It is shaped like a cross, except within that cross is a symbol like a like a like a cloud with three little puffs, but then it tails out like a like a teardrop. I stare at that a little bit. I take in the whole thing and then we go. We go. I thank her. And we go. So you and Victoria keep going, following behind I remember, the I remember uh, that group. shit though. I yeah. Remember that logo. You should draw it. Well, because I mean, I could try. Maybe. So, going down the stairs. You guys reach dungeon level ones where the hallways become a lot more colder, damp, and they kind of smell a bit dingy. What class are we going to again? I want to ask the group. Um, Melvin's like, oh, we're going to History of Magic. Sounds like this is going to be fun. Seems like we got a lot of history in these paintings and, and dads and shit. So as you come down the stairs, following the Puckwedgie's orders, you take a right down the hallway going down another flight of stairs. Oh my god. Going down the flight of stairs, the hallways become a little more lavish. They're still cold and damp, though, but forward you can see two stairs winding up to what looks to be some sort of chapel or temple underground. But that's not where you need to be going. Where you need to be going is you need to take a left down this hallway, another right, which goes down a very long corridor. As you continue down this corridor, you start to hear weird noises, growling, roaring, kind of spitting noises, to coming from a massive steel door to your left up ahead. There's a sign on the door that reads, Do not enter unless faculty. In big fiery red letters along the steel door. That's in the second dungeon, you said? Second level dungeon. So you hear these noises coming from this room. All of a sudden, the door swings open and out comes Ember. Ember Levert. Again, she's a woman with many scars on her face. Her hair is buzzed on the right side. Her long, raven black hair is combed over to the left side, tied into two ponytails. The bar buzz part of her head shows three deep red claw marks, while the right side of her lips have a vertical small gash, and a worm-like scar cuts horizontally across the bridge of her nose. She looks at the group, the Thunderbird students, and says, what, what are you doing? Shouldn't you all be in class? I want to just, yeah, just keep, I didn't stop. I want to just keep going. You kept that, walking? Yeah, yeah we're, we're making our way to History of Magic. 
She's like, good. So she turns around, walking into um, Finn and Victoria, but she just moves past you two. You guys continue to History of Magic when you enter into the classroom. The class itself is rectangular. However, only half of the classroom has desks set up. The other half has rows of tables with different with different objects, scrolls, or maps laid about. A big wooden oak desk is situated at the front of the room with the rest of the desks with a chalkboard behind the desk. That takes up the entirety of the wall behind the desk. That desk has a pile of books stacked to the ceiling. Containing maps splayed along. Books opened up. It's like a Jenga tower of books on this desk. It was behind the desk who, whose neck like <laughs> violently snaps towards you guys as you walk in. Finn has met her briefly. This is Professor Lau. She introduces herself. I see you guys were, are late. I've already introduced myself, but I will do it again. I'm Professor Lau. You see, she's an Asian woman with a very serious expression on her face. She wears circular glasses, which rest perfectly at the tip of her nose. Her hair is patterned with gray around her bangs, but despite the age in her hair, her face does not show a single wrinkle. Her outfit is very different from other teachers. Over the navy blue robe that Ilvermorny students and teachers are supposed to wear, she wears a cranberry colored cloth band around her neck that is connected by a golden Gordian knot uh, brooch that, at that uh, attached to it and hanging below the brooch is a cranberry colored flap that drapes down to her ankles. Very different from other teachers robes. She looks at you all very seriously and says, you may all take your seat. Also as well, minus 20 points to Thunderbird for being late. I expect you all to be a little more punctual for next class. Apologies, Professor. I just want to scurry to seat, so I sit down. So you all scurry to your seats. Minus 20. Okay. You see, as you guys all sit down, they're in rows. So Wampus sits in the front, then Thunderbird, Horned Serpent, and Puckwudgie. The row behind you being Horned Serpent, Marcus, Evelyn, and... Gerard, all smirk and snicker at your late arrival. You sit in the desks. Professor Lau begins to teach, this time without interruption. Professor Lau goes on to teach everyone about the founding of Ilvermorny. She goes on to talk about Isolt Sayre, who was a pureblood witch born in Ireland. Her parents were killed in a house fire and her aunt Gormleth Gaunt adopted and began to raise her. Professor Lau looks to the class and says, Can anyone tell me anything about the Gaunt family? Can I roll in? Yes, see? roll intelligence, please. Intelligence? Yeah. Is old as the headmistress is what she was telling us, right? Not history of magic. Just Isolt, she was just saying, she's just telling you, um, Isolt is the headmistress, but she's just getting into the history of where she came from. Uh, 11. Oh, yeah, you're good. So, you would know that um, the Gaunt family is actually ancestors to Salazar Slytherin, and they actually practice inbreeding to keep the bloodline pure. I'll raise my yep. hand. Uh, they're uh, re uh, related to the uh, Salazar Z Slytherin. Oh, fuck. And uh, they also uh, were into breeding amongst each other to keep it pure. So she says, very good, very good. The reason for this is they were actually actually racist towards muggles, half-bloods, or muggle-born. If you were not pure-blood, a pure-blood supremacist, then you were against them. They very much believed in Salazar Slytherin's um, philosophy of pure-blood or uh, wizards and witches. Can anybody... Oh, excuse me. So she asks another question. Can anybody tell me who Salazar Slytherin is? Can I roll again, I guess? Yep. Yeah. Oh, six. Okay. So you, you raise your hand, and when she asks you, you kind of come up with a, a brief information that's not really spot on in terms of the right detail. So she says, you're on the right track, but you're not there. Any other students? So Puckwudgie raises their hand, specifically Benedict. 
am I supposed to do? I don't know shit. Benedict raises his hand, spouting nonsense about Salazar Slytherin that's completely wrong. Professor Lau says, can I have someone who actually knows the answer, please? I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll. Okay. Quickly raise my hand. 19. You know Salazar Slytherin was a powerful pureblood wizard who helped find or found the British wizarding school of Hogwarts. So after saying that, Professor Salau says, very good job. Can anybody else answer the next question that's not in Thunderbird, please? <laughs> See that every day. So, going on with my lecture. Gormlith Gaunt was a pureblood supremist. She hated muggles, or rather no mages, for American terminology. If we were to use North American language... You should. Sorry, I, yeah. <laughs> she hates no mages. I wrote that twice. Um, she also hated anyone who sympathized or helped or chose to go near muggles, such as Isolt Sayer's parents. Gormleth murdered her sister and brother-in-law, taking Isolt and raising her to become a powerful witch. My next question, does anyone know how Isolt escaped from her aunt? So Horned All Serpent right. Hand raises. <laughs> Specifically, Evelyn. Very, um posh and kind of arrogant she speaks oh she stole gormleth's wand and fled to america by boarding the mayflower everyone knows that so professor lao nods she's like i hope everyone knows that my next question is why is gormleth's wand so important so no one raises their hand so she's like thunderbird uh, roll i guess yeah yeah so arthur's gonna see if he can Recall any info? Uh, plus three, fourteen. Nice. You remember the stories your dad told you yeah. about Salazar Slytherin's wand and how Gormleth Gaunt, or how Isolt Sayer stole Gormleth Gaunt, which was Salazar Slytherin's wand. Yeah. So after saying that to Professor Lau, she says, very good. For um, the participation today from Thunderbird, plus five points. Well done. Upon arrival in the New World, Isolt Sayer goes on to flee deep into the forest of Massachusetts. Here she meets a Puckwudgie about to be killed by a hide behind. You guys will learn more about that in Magical Creatures, but for now I'm going to carry on with my lecture. Casting a curse, she saved the Puckwudgie and carried him back to her makeshift hut to nurse him. It was there that a deep friendship between Isolt and her new name or her new friend, William the Puckwudgie, was made. Do you guys know? This friendship that started is what really spawned Puckwudgie being connected to Overmorning. As you guys have probably seen, there's lots of Puckwudgie within the hallways that act as Overmorning security. This Puckwudgie, William, would go on to show his ult the many dangerous and friendly creatures of Mount Greylock, as well as the medicinal and poisonous herbs that grew. It was William's tour of Mount Greylock, though, and his ult's recordings of these locations that would help Henry Ramore, an intelligent but thieving wizard, hide his legendary magical artifacts. But we will discuss him more when we reach our modern wizard subject. So I just want to raise my hand. Is, yes. Is Henry, is Henry Ramore, he was alive when his old was alive as well? No, Henry Ramore actually disappeared about three years ago. I raise my hand. He was a teacher here, and no one knows what happened yeah. to him. Yes, what oh, do you want to say, uh, Arthur? No, no, you just uh, answered. I was just wondering, I'm like, does anyone know? But you then just said. Oh. Yeah. yeah, no one really knows where he disappeared, why, or if, he, if he's even still alive. Was there a last known place he was at, or reasoning? The last known words were spoken to um, the headmistress, and he said he wanted to go check something out in the Brightwood. But he was never seen again after that. What class did he teach? He taught history of magic. I've been his substitute ever since. Wow. All these artifacts behind us, which I remind you students, do not touch, are, were his that he collected over the years. He's explored Africa, Europe, Japan, Asian countries. He's been to Arabian countries. Um, Russia... Scandinavians. Does he have? I want to raise my hand again. Is yep. he? Is he a? 
Did he study a lot of what's going on in this dungeon? Because there seems like there's a lot of uh, dangerous stuff down here. So she looks at the artifacts behind you. She's like, like the magical artifacts? That was a little bit, but more so on our way here. Just the dungeon itself wasn't... Oh, so she's like, you're talking about the, the Magizoology room. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't don't go in there. There's maybe about 60 creatures locked up. Your students are, are not allowed to go in there. Was that one of his projects? No, that is not. That is Ember's project. He was actually highly against the storing of magical creatures. Oh, that would have sucked being in here all day with that zoo right beside him. <laughs> I'm surely, I'm sure he did not like it. I just want to shake my head and just sort of reflect on that so i was just gonna ask what yeah. the like can we just see what the magic like the artifacts are behind or like visually yeah looking behind you you see a kind of a semi-translucent crystal skull <laughs> the next one you see is some sort of map seems magical but also ordinary at the same time this map has well, looks to be a map of the Brightwood. However, locations seem to flash. Depending, like, if you look at one location, it'll slowly materialize, and the other ones will dematerialize. The next one is a cutlass of some sort. It looks very rustic and old. It looks like if you hit it against stone, it would shatter into a million bits. The next one are bandages, which seem smell kind of gross and old but they've also got looks like they got blood on them i want to ask uh professor lao which one of these artifacts were you most intrigued or is possibly your favorite so she looks at them she's like actually it's not in this room it's in the next room that has more intriguing artifacts over there are a lot more dangerous are you talking about the animals miss <laughs> she says Fuck no i'm not talking about the animals <laughs> well excuse me she points over where you guys didn't really notice it before, but there's an outline where the stone bricks are. They don't really connect to this one portion of the room. The pattern changes. She's like, there's a door there that leads to another room. However, students can't access it. Only faculty can. Um, it has a lot more of Remora's more dangerous artifacts he collected oh. over the years. One of them in there, though, is an old Scandinavian artifact that was used during pagan magic times which could essentially call down, um, how do you say, it was essentially a spear that could conjure runic magic. And when I say like runic- a staff, almost? Almost like a staff, yeah, but it was a spear. And essentially yeah. this, this spear- An aganim scepter, like the fucking- Kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of. So she says you could essentially, you could draw runes on this spear and it could harness magic. It was a very interesting artifact. Um, but that's only one of the many few I've been looking at that one. The crystal skull right there, I think it hides some sort of map inside, but I'm not really sure. I'm still trying to access it. But yeah, um, any questions? Was that was that all the artifacts behind her? Just like the three? Okay. There's another one. Um, there's a small branch, which looks like a wooden hand. Um... She says that hand is some sort of prosthetic for a person. However, it's not recommended you wear it as it shrinks you down into a young real boy. So I don't recommend putting that wooden hand on. Young real boy. Yeah, essentially, you just grow a lot smaller. And by smaller, I mean like two feet tall. Yeah. Your body gets very stiff. I don't really understand the reason why he took this artifact or where he got it from, but if you hold it long enough, you will shrink. And you won't come back. Okay. I'm not sure, and I'm not willing to test it. But in his notes, I read that um, okay. for in his research, he tested it on a muggle, and it did that. They never came back? I don't know if they grew back, but it said that during his time with them, they stayed as a two-foot-tall man who lost all facial hair his voice receded back into a kind of a, a squeaky more soft voice as well as on top of it uh the boy became more stiff in his movements almost like a wooden doll professor how come these yeah. items that we don't understand fully or that are possibly dangerous are just so kept 
around without more protection, if you don't mind me. Because as a wizard and an aspiring witch and wizards, you all need to understand how dangerous but incredibly useful understanding these magical artifacts are to our history and to our current modern day society. Look at the the indigenous tribes of the magical world. They use many different magics that we're not fully understanding yet, as well as artifacts that we're still wrapping our heads around. The Sasquatch can cast magic without using wands, something that African tribes, very few African tribes can do. So we're still... I just want to say my character shakes her head when she like says like that stuff. I'm not saying... Oh, with the Sasquatch? Okay. okay. So Professor Lau looks at the time, she's like, wow, an hour flew by that quick? Holy... You guys have been very great. I'm going to let you out five minutes early so you can make your way to your next class. Professor, before we leave so early, I just have a, a quick question. Will we be learning about Billy the Kid at all? So, she she kind of squints at you. She's like, Billy the Kid, why would you want to know about him? Oh, we just passed by a, uh, a painting. The uh, reason we were late uh, is because we found out Billy the Kid is... Uh, Finn, uh, what did you say, Kiana? Stagerhart's uh, uh, father. So he, Professor Lau looks over, seeing that Finn looks slightly uncomfortable, and she says, we'll, we'll be talking lots about Billy the Kid eventually when we get to our modern wizard subject, and we'll also be going into details about your father and his atrocities against the Sasquatches. Do you have any books on my mom? He's like, I don't, who's your mom? <laughs> <laughs> my mother. Her name is Carissa. She's a witch who, fl- who got, flies around in the Rockies. She used to. She went to Bobaton, but came across to America ten so years ago. But she just lives on the west coast, on the other side of the Rockies, mostly. The name uh, doesn't sound familiar. Is there any creative or um, historical things she's done for wizarding society? No, I know she likes to help people a lot, though. She's really into uh, being a healer. I think that was her practice, and she enjoyed the outdoors as well. So she, spent yeah. a, she spent a lot of time in the mountains. Never, so Gerard, act, or not Gerard, sorry, Benedict speaks up. He's like, I've heard of your mother. My father's worked with her before. Oh, Benedict, really? I haven't met my mother, like, too much. She's, like, been away when I was growing up, but maybe we could be, uh, I wonder how close they were. So he's like, I think they were really close, but I'm the same. I didn't really know my dad that much. He, uh, life of, oh, excuse me, life of a healer, right? Yeah, they're always moving around. So Professor Lau says, Arthur, I can see you really want to say something right now. What do you speak your mind? No, it's just interesting. It seems like a lot of the professors here are against uh, my father and can are so uh, ready to speak so openly about their uh, feelings towards it to uh, us young, impressionable students. We will be speaking unbiasedly about history, about the good and the bad. Your father did indeed commit atrocities against the Sasquatch however justifiable they were they were indeed he was protecting the magical community and that is undeniable yeah I just want before I leave the class I'm like I want to say I'm like and make sure we get the history of the atrocity the Sasquatches did as well and then I just leave the class when when is this a Sasquatch war unit so Professor Lyle says, um, we'll be covering the Sasquatch Rebellion that's been occurring, that's been ongoing for the last 10 years, um, probably in a couple, couple weeks from now. Wow, I just want to sort of think, like, how much my mother's been involved with that, just sort of walk away. Wow. So, um, as you guys get up, leaving your class, leaving History of Magic behind, Ayana runs up to you guys and says, uh, what'd you guys, so how'd you guys like the class? Was, yeah, sort of embarrassing coming down late, but I found it interesting. I guess we're learning, learn, we're going to learn a lot about each other. So Sushina steps forward, very shy um, Asian girl. She uh, kind of holds her hands in front of her, kind of like poking her fingers together. You see her, like, long black hair kind of drapes over her eyes. She's very close. <laughs> She's Mercy. like, oh, I, I really Mercy. enjoyed the subject as well. I thought it was interesting. Can we see what house she's in? Like, what house? Yeah, she's Wampus as well. Okay, I yeah. see. No, sorry, yeah, she has the Wampus uh, okay. brooch on her. 
I don't want to. I don't want to make it seem like <laughs> assuming anything. But are you related to our teacher? <laughs> so she she kind of giggles. She's like, "Yeah, she is my mother." She's like, "How did you guess that?" No, I just I don't, haven't seen too many Asian people here yet. <laughs> what? Fuck. For anybody who doesn't know, I forgot to mention this. Our game is set in 1890. Um, not saying that we're going to be <laughs> how they how they were. we yeah. just Bro, like, the question he asked was like, a proper fucking... question. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was a good question. No, it was a good question. What? What? I just honestly mean? thought he was gonna pop out like oh. you have her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, I, so, I just didn't get it. My bad. Moving forward, um, Sushina just says like, "Yeah, she's my mom." Cool, cool. So, you see Pakwaji start to come forward, mingling with you guys as well. So, um, where are they? Pakwaji. Gotta love Pakwaji. Benedict and Briar. Benedict again, the boy with the blind eyes. Right eye is completely white. However, he wears a silver monocle that causes his eye to look magnified. This magically antique definitely helps him see through that eye. However, Briar is with Benedict. Briar, a girl who loves flowers and nature, she's always getting into trouble though for reading books in her magical creatures class, which you guys haven't really seen yet. I don't know why I read that part. <laughs> Pretend I didn't read that part. She can always be seen wearing a rose in her hair. So she comes up to you guys, fixing the rose in her hair. And she says, oh, I can't wait to learn more about, like, how Azult discovered the nature I'm with William. I'm not there with them. Yeah, I'm just looking oh, at Oh, okay, everybody. you just kept looking at me. No, I'm, I'm just like, oh, I'm not there. Okay, okay. Arthur needs to take a chill pill, man. <laughs> wait, where's, wait, Arthur's gone? Arthur, gone? he yeah, ran I off because, you yeah. know. He's got daddy issues. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where am I at? You're with the crowd. Oh, okay. Unless you stayed in the class. Uh, probably not. I don't think so. Victoria's still really with you, tied up the hip. Yeah. I've... Yeah, as old was, uh, she met a Pukwaji. That's who that's who. I don't know if you knew that already, Briar. I was, was like... attentive in class, yes. <laughs> oh, she was in the same. I thought she was in Magical Creatures. No, she no, no. Like... I was in no, class, too. Oh, yeah. they're all in the same class. Just, he read ahead. Yeah, I read, I read a little ahead on one of my notes. Oh, so that was my oh, fault. Yeah, 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 no, but yeah, because she was asking about his old Sayer, though, right? Yes, yeah. So like, sorry, say it again. Then I was saying like she did, she met a Pukwaji, like that was one of her first events. That oh yes, a, like you'll you'll enjoy that. And when his name is William, she's like, yeah, yeah, I, I do really enjoy that. You know, I, I'm I actually oh, talked to a lot of the, I talked to a lot of the Pukwaji around the school. <laughs> yeah, that, Sky and Hazel are pretty cool. She's like, I haven't met them yet. Wow, I wonder how many there are. Hundreds. No way, a hundred. There's got to be hundreds. They're everywhere. Yeah, I guess the school's pretty big. So, as you guys are walking, um, Melvin says, wait, wait, guys, 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 guys. Magic Creatures class is right there. And as you guys come down that long corridor, the class is right on your right. There's only like a two-minute walk from the History of Magic class. That's where. Yeah, yeah, Arthur's already sitting down in class. Are you uh, gloomy or are you just kind of no, perky? No, I... I in, in, on the inside, I'm a bit, like, upset with how uh, people have been talking about my father and everything. But at the same time, I'm just I'm just sitting there. Kind of, like, you can see him a bit, like, like angry kind of thing. But I, I'm still sitting there, like, straight back, just ready, just waiting. But I don't even pay any attention to uh, them when they walk in. Okay. I want to sit down, but, like, sort of in the back. I don't know who else is going to sit in the back. I feel like I'm sort of sick. Like, I don't enjoy walking yeah. into this class, you know, like... Oh, uh, okay. So I want to say that I was at the back, just so you know. The back, okay. Yeah. This class is a massive square-shaped room within the second basement of the dungeons. Cold and damp with stale air, there's a couple windows in this room that let in some sunshine. However, candles float about the room, slowly hovering around, providing more light. The desks oh, excuse me, are arranged in an ordinary fashion, in which each house is to sit by a row. So, funny enough, Thunderbird sits at the back. Um, however, the teacher is currently not there right now. Do we have time for a bathroom break before this class starts, or what? Yes. Thank God. So, taking a quick break, so we Sorry, can all guys. take a leak. I was just holding. Sitting in the class, close behind you, all the other houses arrive, taking their seats. However, there's still about 10 minutes until class should start. 
Give him some time for some socializing. I'm just gonna open up my zoology book and start reading. Start reading it. Yeah. I go strut over to uh, where Benedict's sitting. Yeah, so you go sit over by Benedict. He looks at you. He's like, "Hey, hey, how's it going?" I just want to ask him, like, so did you know your mom then as well, or did who did were you an orphan? No, I I knew my uh, my mom stayed with me. Um, she pretty much raised me while my dad was gone. I asked like exactly where where are you from, Benjamin? Like. Benedict. 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 <laughs> it's okay. Um, he says, I'm from uh, Alberta. Oh, really? Yeah, where are you from? I'm from southern Alberta as well. So he's like, no way! I was from the town of Lethbridge, but sometimes I just we just kept it low-key. With me and, my, me and my pops up in the forest, just closer to the Rockies, you know? A little bit more west. Oh, okay, interesting. I can't believe you were so close. How yeah. did you get over to Boston? My dad has some connections back in Boston, and one of them just took me over one night. It was sort of like I was just sleeping on the back of a rod. Very cool. I've flown before, though, with my mom, so I, was, I don't know why I didn't know where I was going. Oh, okay. My mom actually flew me to over morning on her broom. Oh, that's a nuts. I know. It's an adorable thing of her. <laughs> I wish my mom could have done the same. So, you guys kind of share some memories, enjoying a nice moment. Briar and, uh... I want to say my character flashbacked a little bit. What does he flashback to? My mother. Your mother as they talk? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arthur flashes back to a green bolt smashing into his mother's chest. Kind of like looking off into the distance. That's not what I feel. <laughs> I don't feel like he's got like a happy memory. Yeah, you're something No, depressing. I understand. No, that's fine. I, I'll just be like, yeah, just sitting there while I'm reading the book and just, as I'm doing that, just, I'll add this in, just conveniently flip to the Sasquatch page and just like, I want to say I grab like my, uh, oh, like the, yeah, the pen and just fucking, like now you, I'm visibly just like, oh. Oh, enraged? Okay. A little like watery eye kind of thing, but looking down like fucking, yeah. So, Kiana, she puts her hand on your shoulder, and when you look over at her, you see her eyes are different. They're almost grayed out. And then they come, the color comes back, the hazel color comes back to her eyes. She looks at you and says, it's not your fault. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up and immediately push her hand. I'm like, don't ever touch me or look in to my head or anything like that. You understand? Holy shit, do an intimidation roll. Oh god, yo. My intimidation is a six. I got that one. I guess she saw it all. She, like yeah, she eyes. saw it all. She's like, I understand and I'll respect your boundaries. Gerard, the short, stocky boy sitting in front of you, he turns around and he's like, why don't you just calm down, man? Calm down. I'm going to turn around and look at him. I'm like, tough talk from someone I can't even see, let alone that has a, a small man problem. Standing up, his chair flops behind him. He's like, what did you say? Did someone say something. <laughs> and I'm going to sit back down in my chair. I want to quickly turn to Benedict and be like, I don't know why our class always beefs around with kids. Dude, he just crossed me when I'm, dude, I'm, dude, I'm fucking livid right now. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Well, I should have asked you, what kind of memories are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Instead yeah. of assuming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're watching your mom die. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, we're just like flashback. I was like, okay, okay. And then you're like, green box. just like, I was just, just like. like oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, dude, yeah it, anyways, works, it works, it works, it works. See, that's what I was that's figuring like PTSD the backstory PTSD flashback was. in the middle of class. Yeah. But like I didn't know for sure. Fucking shit. Now I still I still don't know in the game. I just yeah. in real life I was like speculating. Ember walks in amidst yeah. this chaotic uproar. In a minute, she walks in. Everyone takes their seat. And goes quiet. <laughs> I guess you're not really that scared. Uh, um, Patrice isn't really that nervous. Does he want to take a seat right away or? No, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go sit down when I see her walking in. Good. I'll move away from Benedict and back to my table. So, you go back to your table. The, uh, Ember takes a seat at her front desk. She waves her curved thorny wand towards the left wall. Or I guess for you guys, the right wall. 
And all of a sudden the wall, the stone wall begins to dematerialize, showing an invisible barrier leading to another room where there's a cage set up, a large cage with a cloth um, draped over it. Ember sits back up, looking at a sheet of paper. She puts it down. She says, all right, I will be teaching your class today. This is Magical Creatures. A little bit about me, I am a hunter. I've hunted every single creature in the US. I know how to hunt them to perfection. I know weaknesses as well as strengths, and this is what this class will be about. You will Why learn how to survive against these creatures. I wanted to just raise my hand. Why not do we try to live with them instead of against them? So she says, okay. Tell me, how do you live with a hide behind? Or a swarm of doxy? Or a teal get? I'm not saying you have to be friends with all of them, but some of them maybe. You say you hunt every creature. I feel like some of them probably could have been good. So she walks towards your table, leaning towards your face, her scars closer now, disgusting. They're like, literally like worms embedded in her skin. That's how deep and gross these scars are. She gets really close to you, her eyes glaring into your soul. She says, what do you know about the way these magical creatures are? I don't know much, but I feel like we have a real bond with them that I think we could use. Instead of having to destroy every time you kill one. Ayana speaks up and says, I agree. We should not We should be learning to live with them. That's what my tribe strives to do. Ember stands up. She's like, how many others in the class believe we should be living with these magical creatures? I'm going to raise my hand. Okay. And then I'm going to ask, how'd you get the scars? So she looks at you and says, which one? Which scar are you talking about? All of them. I just want to know which creatures are dangerous. The only creature I never captured or killed is one I still every year try to hunt is the horned serpent that hides in the bright wood canals. Aside from that, I got the one on my lip from a hide behind barely grazed me but the bugger got me nonetheless what was the what was the woods oh. called brightwood brightwood okay thank you i knew it was the same one the other one was from the first time i hunted a teal get when i was a third year student its antlers caught me on the side of my head grazing yeah. me across the face cutting my nose sorry what was it called a teal get teal get and hide behind okay hide behind was the lip you sorry the, you said the hide behind yeah, lip, hit the yeah. lip and then the teal get got the fucking side. Yes, and then she lifts up the other side of her hair where her raven black hair is draped down. She lifts it up and you see she's missing her ear. She says, and this was bit off by a Sasquatch. The filthiest of all creatures. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like spring up and just like pay more attention there. So she notices that. And you see she, she turns around and as she turns around she starts to smile. Noticing she caught your attention says, can anyone tell me anything about the Sasquatch? Can I roll? Yeah. For just something, to just to, I want to know. Or actually, I don't need to roll the Saison, like, because I, I can tell. So I'll just put up my hand. Yeah. So she says, yes, Mr. Gray. I can tell you that they are just animals. And without cause, we'll take everything. So, can I roll, can I roll and rebuttal him as well after? I, I just want to say, I'm just like, end. Do not take what they say uh, as truth, as they are known also to work with other wizards. Very good. Very good, Mr. Gray. So you want to rebuttal? Roll intelligence, good sir. Actually, what's magical creatures under it? Is that wisdom? That's wisdom, I think, yeah. So yeah, but roll magical creatures. Plus he has that minus five. Yes. Dirty. Because of your ground Fifteen. Super. Plus, Dirty. plus eight, too. Rebuttal. Sasquatch are not... They're actually pacifists. They don't believe in fighting and killing. They're herbal, herbalists? What is it called when you are um you only eat freaking... Herbivore? Herbivore, thank you. They're herbivores. They don't believe in war. They're pacifists. But they want to be seen... They don't want to hide from muggles. They want to be seen by them, which means it threatens magical 
society. That's why they're so hunted because of that belief. Um, I, I, to rebuttal, though, yeah, they're not dangerous creatures. Yeah, and wizards work with them because of their kind nature and their intellect, as they're able to cast without using wands. So he rebuttaled that against me. Or you I was going to say, say at the end of it as well. What did I want to turn to Miss um, Ember? I mean, like, I don't know what you could have done to get to Sasquatch to get make him make him or her give you those scars but I think continue I don't know I don't know what position you got yourself in or what war you've been fighting but it seems so Ember says are you implying that I simply walked up to one of these creatures and it just attacked me because that's exactly what it did I did nothing wrong I was trying to secure part of um massachusetts borders more around arkham when these creatures came and attacked me viciously without mercy oh let's see that like when you get that context it, it sounds much worse i agree so ayana speaks up and says well there's always two store two sides to war so ember looks displeased with that comment and says moving on from this topic I see only Mr. Gray has some competence in my class so far. Today, we will be discussing the Doxy, also known as the... And she stops and she looks at the class. She's like, please, someone speak. Roll? Yeah, roll for magical creatures. 11 plus 8, 19. So you speak up immediately oh. and you're like, the, um, the biting fairies. So... She says, good, please. Next time, though, a little more respectful. Raise your hand. And she looks at her paper and says, Patrice. So, she says, the biting fairy are insectoid in appearance with bulbous blue eyes like a fly, stocky multiple limbs like a grasshopper and purple-brown skin that helps them camouflage itself within the trees they make hives in. Its ears are as large as its bodies, and they flap a hundred times per second, allowing them to zoom around at incredible speeds, almost looking like they're teleporting. So, she says, please, everyone observe. She walks through that, that barrier, and it kind of ripples as she walks through. And over the one side of the class, she unwraps cloth from one of the, the cages. And inside is a big, long log, maybe about 15 feet in width. And you can hear these doxy buzzing around in there. A few of them spring out, flying towards the cave, disgusting-looking little critters. They zap into the cage, and she starts to laugh. She says, this class are doxy. You, they're territorial, and the minute you go near their hives, they will bite. And their bite hurts a lot, although it is not venomous. That's any good news. Okay. Moving on. Mainly. Mainly. Present within the Brightwood. Although very few have been reported to see these creatures. Are the Chanotila. Originally seen by the indigenous tribe within the, um, the Massachusetts. These are creatures of neutrality. Their name translates to little tree dwellers. Can anybody tell me anything about these creatures? Anything. So we're rolling for magical creatures. Yeah, I got an eight. Plus. That's it. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. That was a seven. Plus Aeonis five. So she got it. So Aeona speaks up. She's like, the Chanotila are considered messengers who warn travelers of danger. So Ember doesn't say good or bad. She just carries on, ignoring Ayana's proper answer. So she says, some say they're guardians of the Brightwood and other forests, trying to maintain balance, but not everybody can see them. And it's kind of interesting why they refuse to show themselves to the rest of the population. However, it is said, though, that a lot of Sasquatch can see them. Who is her name again? Chanotila. Now, my favorite, the Tealget. These are more rare, but very dangerous. I unfortunately do not have a specimen to show you all today. 
its oval shaped body containing antlers on the top the crown of its head and a maw with multiple rows of jagged teeth like a leech strong antlers it has strong antlers that it uses to pin its prey down so it can easily devour it very dangerous and if you see one of these let me ask what do you do I guess I'll roll and find out Oh, Mr. Patrice, Would you, you don't got shit. Mm. So, you're you not really shit. sure. You don't got shit, You start to raise your hand, but then you pull it down because yeah. you're not sure. Can I yeah. What do you do? 14 plus 8. You know, you've actually encountered one in Alberta once. In the woods? In the woods. These creatures have no eyes. Producing loud noises or using spells that disorientate their hearing will help you very much. She says, after you answer this, she said, Ember speaks up and says, or if you're brave enough, kill it quickly. Now for my favorite, this little bugger was hard to catch, but I'm glad I brought him out today. She takes the cloth wrapping off the largest cage in this observation room. Ripping off the cage, there's a hairy humanoid creature on its knees, hunched down, with its arms shackled behind its back, and its feet also shackled together. It's dark brown hair, it's furry body, it's dark brown hair though on its scalp, hangs over its eyes. It lifts its head up quickly, glaring at the class. This is a Sasquatch. She looks at it, says mangy, dirty creature. And with her wand, she casts some sort of spell, waving her hand in a lightning formation, casting some sort of zap that hits the Sasquatch, stunning it. It makes no noise though, it just shakes. The zap wears off and it just continues to glare at her without noise or sound. It's intensity just roaring from the Sasquatch. Again, she zaps it. This is when Ayana stands up, walking towards the barrier and through it. She says, leave him alone, very angrily. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up to Ayana behind her as well. I'm like, I want to look at, I remember be like, I think you've done this enough times. He doesn't deserve any more. Ember looks at you two, disgusted. She says, take your seat and next time you walk through this without permission, I will make sure I have you suspended. Understood? I want to glare and look at the Sasquatch and just nod my head and walk back to my seat. Good. Ayana, though, does not listen. The teacher, Ember, says, All right, minus 30 points to Wampus for disobedience. So, Ayana, after hearing that, Rupert gets up, walking his way over, grabs Ayana and says, listen, just sit down for now, we'll figure out after. Ayana, though, angrily, stubbornly submits and goes and sits down. Ember, coming back into the room, waving her wand to where the wall reseals back into stone brick. She says, I'm very disappointed in you all. Do you know what these creatures are doing to our world right now? They are waging war with us. If it wasn't for Arthur's father, they probably would have won by now. Why are they, why are they inflicting more? I just want to say right now at this moment, I'm holding like my, like I have my hands in my pocket, just holding like that uh, little stopwatch of mine. Okay. Because... They're engaged in war with us because we don't want them to show themselves to the, the nomadges. But they want to. And that threatens us. And if the nomadges fully have evidence that magical creatures exist, that means magic exists. Which is going to cause another Salem witch hunt. I want to slowly put my hand up. So she looks at you, waves her hand. And I'll be like, 
what's the most efficient way of taking out a Sasquatch? So she says, a curse you guys will learn in your sixth year, Avada Kedavra. With that, a clock lets out a bell, a ringing noise. She looks up, she says, I guess class is done. You're all dismissed. Next time, bring better attitudes into my class. I'll stand up and uh, go to uh, Patrice and be like, let's go for a walk while we go to our, imagine our next class. Yes, yeah. her- herbology. Yeah, so I'm like, let's go for a walk. To a, while, let's walk together to herbology. I'll say, I'm excited for that class. Maybe it's going to be a bit more uplifting than this one. Well, seems that uh, there's a lot of different opinions. I can say from... Uh, my perspective i disagree with uh, you i just don't think it's ever good to see so much suffering in a place where we should be growing if you know what I mean. suffering should be seen from both sides i don't know like i honest said there is two sides of the story and i've only heard one so i would like to i'd like to get the other as well it seemed like you and Iana only cared for one i cared for us as well but i also know that Regardless of what those nomads see, I should be a wizard of a higher power and never be a- smarted by them. I've seen many higher power wizards. A lot of them are on the side with me and my father. One um, family in particular, though, was on the wrong side, but they're not with us. Whose family wasn't on the wrong side? The Brights. Do you want to ex- explain the, who the brights are, or is that is that too much no, time for the class? Well, we're, we're walking to class. Oh, You're sure. walking to your next yeah. class, yeah. Uh, and I'll feel like they're traitors. That's what they are. What has Finn doing? I'm, like this whole time, I've just been in my head, like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? Like, I mean, obviously, there's like there's so more, much, and you can't ignore what happened last night. So I'm just like, true. I will, obviously, I'm taking it all in. I'm just listening. I see this guy's clearly getting worked up over the Sasquatch. So is he. So I just, I'm just taking it all in. Okay. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens in a bit. You know. Has there been any attempts? Like, I know your father has obviously set up to kill the Sasquatch, I say, as we were walking. See. Has, he, has there been any attempts to try to make amends with them or negotiate? That's um, what, a reasonable what, A reasonable means to end the conflict? That's what everyone has so... Uh, Confused. My father isn't killing them for no reason. What you say? They're. What's your passive perception? Uh, thirteen. Okay. David, as you're talking to Parker, feel something slip into your pocket, and Aana walks past you. Anyways, continue. Sorry. Uh. What the fuck did I say again? Yeah, I, I've. Um, um, you're talking about the brights. If there's any, you know, if there's any negotiation, Wait. I said. Oh yeah, I see it. Do you want to roll for perception? What's your passive perception, actually? 14. No, you don't see it. Roll uh, the nice 20. Yeah, so... What? You rolled a 20. Yeah, oh, bullshit. Shit. She's fucking stealthy. BS. Uh, anyways, uh, um, yeah, I was saying... Um, Did you just say BS? Can I finish what I'm trying to Did say? Did you just say BS? <laughs> yeah. Trust my fucking rolls? Uh, we, all know, we, all know, we all know your motives. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kidding. Uh, help yeah, you? but uh, I'm, I'm gonna say that uh, everyone has to confuse that my father's killing them. He's not killing them for no reason, regardless of how we feel. He's doing it to protect our world. We tried to negotiate with the Sasquatches, but they did not care for our side. They do not care for our kind. So we have to do what we have to do until we can come to an agreement. But until then, we can't just let them run the tyranny. I just want to say, like, acknowledge the point you made and just say, all right, like, I, I see. Um, Am I, I don't know. near them? Yeah. Do you want to be right behind them, or? I don't know, I was just asking. Yeah, sure, yeah, you're near them. I'm just going to say to Arthur, it seems like your, your dad's telling you some pretty gnarly bedtime stories. Well, as much as I understand what you're saying, at least, one, I had my dad there. And you just found out, you know, your dad was who he was. 
And secondly, no, I actually have first-hand experience, unlike you, being lost and having no purpose. You've seen a Sasquatch? I have. I have. And I you lived just out there. I I'm not here right now. Why do you hate it? I have my reasons. Did you see, did you yeah, see him die? Yeah, it seems like a lot of making stuff up. I'm obviously using my insight to tell mm. that he's a little bitch. <laughs> little bitch is incorrect. He is telling the truth. He has seen a Sasquatch. I'm going to look at him and say, has, has he died? Have you seen a die in front of you? I've seen what the worst can come from a Sasquatch and what get, they're capable of. It doesn't get much worse than what that we saw in just that last class, that's for sure. Then you have a lot that I hope you don't have to see. And that right there, I want to just make it, that was the one time you saw, like, there wasn't, like, an asshole tone or anything. Like, I was being sincere. Like, the one time you guys have now seen Arthur be sincere and everything there is with that. Nope. I kind of like, uh, be in accordance. Cool. Kiana, Victoria, Melvin, all quiet, all shocked by what they just heard. I want to say that I... Are we almost to class or how much farther to class? Did anyone see that Kiana shit or not? When she touched him? When she gave me the note? Yeah, you guys would've. Oh. Yeah. So I obviously know something's up. I... I want to, like, now drop back from being with him and go to Kiana and just kind of, like, lightly, like, just grab her here and, like, uh, not, like, in her leg, but, like, her shoulder. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, my knee? I want to grab her knee? No, but, uh, and just, uh, uh, when, if she, like, looks back, just be, like, no, hold back a little bit, like, stay behind the crowd kind of thing. I want when, when we turn around, too, because I'm assuming we're, like, at the front or are we at the back? You're at the front of the uh, crowd right now. When we turn back, I wanted to ask the class too. Like, do you do you guys have opinions on the magical creatures? Yeah, majority of the students say they don't agree with the um, the discrimination towards the Sasquatch. Even Evelyn disagrees with it. So, okay. mm, that's the bitch from Horn yeah. Serpent. Gotcha. Wow. So, anyways, I want to hang back, let them walk a bit, and I can see it. Is anyone? around me do I have to roll I guess perception look around yeah. we're still walking but I don't want anyone I want to be yeah so you away. just you just slowly yeah um drag behind the crowd I want to say to her I'm like look I understand what you're capable of doing and I know I made my point clear but don't ever do that to me again no matter what you see let alone don't share whatever you saw. And then uh, after I say it, I want to keep walking, and then I'll look back and be like, and I'm sorry for being an ass, or like just being rude. So she nods and she just says like, sorry, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, and then I'll keep walking to class. Or I guess I'll just walk with her to class, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden though, she stops. Her eyes change again. She looks around, and then continues moving away from the like in the opposite direction kiana where are you going so she doesn't answer she just keeps I'll, I'll grab like her hand so you grab her hand and when she turns back and looks at you her full eyes are black and she says the next gaunt will rise the next gaunt will rise I'm like we're going to the headmaster so her eyes go back to normal she looks really tired She's like, oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes I just get flashes. You said the next gun will rise. She's like, yeah, my mom told me I sometimes spit out nonsense. We just learned who the guns are. So to me, in a world of magic, nothing's nonsense. Especially if everything you've told me so far that you've seen is true. So Kiana says, but should we really go to the headmistress for this? Who else will we go to? So she shrugged. She's like, I don't know. Maybe just like a nurse? What did you see? I want to look at her in the eyes. I'm like, just because someone tells you something's bullshit does not mean you're crazy. Wow. So Pukwudgie approaches says, students, please make your way. Continue towards class. Pukwudgie. Uh, she saw something very bad. What is something... 
who would be the appropriate person to tell? So he looks at her and says, what did you see? I can't share that. So she looks at him and says, I just had like a weird flash. Like it's, I'm fine. So the puck just says, if you're fine, please make your way to class. What do you know of the guns, uh, puck Wudgie? So the puck Wudgie shrugs and says, I don't know, it's a name? Gaunt, like they're hunched over? I'll, I'll keep walking with Kion and be like, you guys need work. <laughs> and then we'll keep going. As we're walking with Kiana. Damn. I'll, yeah, I'll be like, uh, like, it's not nonsense, Kiana. And do you have now they're these behind, all- we obviously know this, they're gone, right? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Can I follow? Them? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to roll, like, stealthily or just openly? Yeah, I could just go open. Okay. So well, you actually, go. I, I want to say that I also looked around to make sure no one was, like, hanging maybe back I'll go or stealth. anything, Fuck too. Fuck it. Okay, roll. Worst case. You have to roll higher than, what's your passive perception? That's passive, even uh, if I'm lo- literally looking. Yeah. I don't yeah, even know. Is there a point of going walking, stealth? Right? That's what I was, like, I was making sure. Because I was being Actually, no, no, so, point, no point going stealth. I'm going straight for it. Yeah. So the way it can be explained yeah, is that, yeah, yeah you're, you you might have up. looked around for a moment, but we're past that moment now. It's like a little oh, further okay. in the future. Yeah, okay, like, I, I mean, like, you guys step back, and then, like, you, you talk guys to know her, and then it's, like, obviously, okay, this dude that's clearly been in the foreground of everything is now not here. It's like, okay. That's all. I'm just going to fall. Yep. Yeah. So you go back. You see Arthur's talking to Kiana. Kiana just looks like she's a bit woozy, yeah. but they're walking towards you. Oh, they're walking towards me? They're walking yeah. back to class now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to say to Finn, I'm like, I'm going to take her to uh, the nurse. She got very uh, dizzy, but I'm not going to disclose anything to her. I'm like, Kiana, let's get you to the nurse. Okay, okay. So obviously persuasion. my passive insight. Like, so on. if Madeline... My passive insight is 18. I oh, can tell yeah. you so, bullshitting. Yeah. She, she's not bullshitting. She, she's, she's fine. Yeah, and then he's obviously lying. I'm, About I'm not lying. Saying that she got a little dizzy. Like, you know. well, she, is she, she does look a bit woozy, like she was dizzy, but she's fine now. So you can see that like Arthur's just trying to be caring by taking her to the nurse. Yeah. But um, she's definitely fine. But obviously, wouldn't the insight say there's something more there, though? No, would that not say Is there another ulterior motive? No. Or, like my- Arthur or Kiana? Like, just the fact that he's covering up the fact she had a vision. Oh, yes, yes, like, that is a good point. Say, like, if he's just like, oh, she's just a little dizzy, we're taking yeah. her to the nurse. You'd be like, no, that's no. bullshit. Yeah, so why is she dizzy? Yeah. So, yeah, you're, yeah, even though he says she's dizzy in your head, you're like, well, okay, but why is she dizzy? Yeah, what happened? So, Kiana speaks up. She's like, I, I just had a vision. And- Kiana, what you saw, you do not pass around. So, Kiana looks at you, she's like, how... Allowed you to dictate what I can and can't say. When it's something like this, Kiana, do you want to say it's nonsense, but who knows what it could spark? See, these are our family, our new family. That we've known for a day. Well, I only know you for a day. Why can't she yes, just but say trust it? my knowledge from where I come from. Okay, Kiana. Well, well, where girl. you come from, where you come from. Whoa, whoa. She's, if you're saying it's nonsense, why can't she just say it? Oh, if it I, doesn't make sense, why can't she just say it? If uh, it's 12. Nothing, Wait, wait, with added modifiers or just 12? Yeah, with added modifiers. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, she just, she shakes her head. And she's like, listen, it might be nonsense. It might not be. I don't know what to make of it. But regardless, these are our family. I've only known you for a day. I've only known Finn, Patrice, Melvin. I feel like it's, if I'm going to share it with you, I should share it with everybody. So then let's wait for common room instead of the halls. I want to, at wanna... least come back because obviously I hear these people arguing okay yeah. can I also keep in mind the time for our class yeah yeah you guys are good on time okay yeah as I as I walk over there I'm like this is her knowledge that's who she is that's obviously she's a re- there's a reason why she knows it as well it's not like that's just a random a random selection so maybe we can help her and maybe we could this is something that we could know and approach I don't know why you have to keep it so secretive I'm, I'm the only one here who's from this world fully and has actually grown up in the uh, Makusa world when things like this happen. She just wants to tell us something. Why do you need to keep her from saying it? Is the Makusa... Okay, they weren't invented yet. Never mind, I can't, I can't think of a comparison. I was going to say the Nazis, but I can't do <laughs> <laughs> Um, You could say that the Makusa, like... Just like a... Thought police? I don't know. Like gang of con shit. Thought police, yeah. <laughs> thought police. I'm going to just say thought police. Whatever. 
Look, you guys do whatever you want, but don't uh, be upset if anything comes of this that uh, from you sharing this around. And I tried to stop, and I'm just gonna walk to class. I uh, wait, Arthur. Before you leave, though, how much? What are you gonna do? Just go tell Kiana, to go tell your dad everything Kiana says. Is that what you plan to do with her knowledge? Ooh. If I was to tell my dad this, you know what he'd ask me? He'd ask me, well, what do we have to go off that? Why do you think I'm acting how I am? It's because I know how this works. That's why I'm saying you hold off on it, and, or we're going to go to uh, the headmaster who might know more information about what she said. You want to go to someone as high up as my father, you better go with something uh, satisfactory. Even if we are going to the headmistress though, Arthur, I think we should go together. And we should do this as a Thunderbird. What did she see that's community. so important? Huh? That Kiana's, we need to talk to these people? Yeah, huh? Why can't she just tell us? Kiana's about to share Evelyn walks by. Alone. She doesn't have the Horned Serpent with her for some reason. But she walks by and she says, Yeah, why is Thunderbird so melodramatic? She keeps walking. It's funny you say that. When you're the one that almost cried when you couldn't get into Transfiguration. And you guys have nonstop been throwing temper tantrums. We're just bonding as a class right now. Something you probably should learn how to do with that big boy Rupert over there. <laughs> Not Rupert. Oh, what's his Marcus. name? Marcus. Marcus. Where even is your house? So she huh? says they're probably already in class. Okay. I so where were you? I... I'm independent. I don't need to be holding I, my pocket roll, in my uh, neighbor's pocket. Can I roll something to see if she's heard or anything? They're, they're, they're not your neighbors. neighbors. <coughs> they're your brothers and sisters. Honestly, the is under... Spit on her face. No, 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 no. Uh, 12. Okay. Yeah, uh, the independence is bullcrap. She definitely was doing something wherever she came from. She just doesn't want to speak about it. So she's hiding something. And as she's walking away, I guess I'll be like, also, get better at lying about what you were doing. She doesn't say anything. She just kind of looks, gives you a cheeky look as she looks back at you and keeps walking. Kiana says, listen, guys, let's get to class. I'll tell you as we walk. And as we were, like, together, we're guys. We're still on together. time for class. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. want to say, I'm like, look, I'm saying you might not approve my methods, but please... Let's not talk about this in the halls. Let's wait at least to the common room. You tell them whatever you like from what you just saw. But I can, let's not do this with she other says, people. I've already whispered around. it in the common or in the hallway to you. Yes, but let's wait to discuss it. I agree with Arthur. Wait to the common room and we'll debrief all together. As a house. Okay, so she says fine. I'll do that. You guys reach your next class for ology, and it's here. We'll take another quick break. Sick. All right, moving over to herbology. So, as we enter the class, though, I do want to emphasize Arthur. Okay. Because like, we're walking in together, right at the front. Yeah. So we'll just go. I'm gonna sit next to Kiana. Okay. Cool. So, as you guys walk towards, sorry, sorry, you're not at herbology class yet, but as you're walking there. The halls, the stone brick interior of the hallways turn into a dusty brown dirt, crawling with wiggly worms, blooming flowers, tree-like roots, and the occasional small spider. Continuing, the hallway opens up to five circular rooms, or should I say gardens, each separated only by a picket fence. The gardens each grow many different plants of different sizes, colors, and odors. Some appear to be alive as they move or vibrate or pulsate. Um, however, you can swear a couple of them even have eyes and look at you. There are no desks or chairs in this room. The ceiling has been magically enchanted to show you a beautiful blue sky with fluffy white clouds and a sun that provides nice heat in the cold, damp basement. Professor Krogas is already in the class, kind of watering some of the plants. Krogas is a druidic-like man who looks like he's half giant, but he's not. He's just really tall. Standing at six foot six, he towers over every student and every teacher, except the librarian, who is half giant. His shaved beard has a, or sorry, his shaved head 
has a short mohawk done in a, a braid, and his long bushy beard almost touches his knees. Within his oh, within this within his beard grows daisies and roses, and you can even swear you hear birds chirping. Krogas is another individual, or creature <coughs> rather, that does not wear the traditional robe of Ilmermorny, but instead wears a navy blue trench coat over a cranberry polo shirt, which is tucked neatly into a brown trousers that used to be white, but are clearly covered in mud and dirt. This is the same color as Aslau, correct? Yes. Yes, all the same color. Krogas, after he's done watering his plants, he looks back very humbly. He's like, oh, my class. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Garden of Ilvermorny. As you can see, there's five different gardens divided Wait, by these picket fences. One sec. Now, that, that would be a perception rule, not insight, as to why they both wear the same thing. I'd actually be a history rule. Really? Yes. That's just a question. It's not that I wanted to. Oh, okay. I was yeah. just like, I was just wondering, because it's like... Perception would be like seeing kind of like little details within like... But if they wore, both wore the same thing, it's like, okay, it's it's history of the school more so than... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then Why are they wearing... Like, what does their uniform resemble? What does it signify historically? Oh, okay, so that's a history thing. Yeah. All right. I want to turn to Arthur as we're walking in. Like, this reminds me of where I grew up at home. There's a lot of gardens. We used to farm a lot. I really enjoy these classes. Because I enjoy... <laughs> I thought that was his character's... <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy like this environment, uh, especially spending time just in the wilderness, sort of just walking around the trees like this. I'm excited to go outside, but this sort of gives me a little taste of it, I guess. I, I want to look to him, and I'll be like, I won't, I'll like lower my uh, self to like not like where I'm being a douchebag or anything. I'll bell sound like I used to uh, l love the outdoors. It was a uh, rare chance when I got to go out and really experience it, but uh, used to love it. But uh, mm. people shame. change as we grow. It's a shame, but he probably had a really nice house too, I guess. He's going to begin teaching the class. Do you guys want to talk as he teaches? Oh, no, no. No, no continue. Start... No, continue. I was just wondering. Continue. He is yeah. not starting just yet. No, I just want to say, yeah. Yeah, the second I hear his voice, I'm going to, like, even if we're talking, I'm going to uh, stop. Okay. But I'll be like, you know, just because the place looks nice and all that doesn't mean it's all right to be there nor is it safe I just want to nod and be like where exactly were you from before you came to every morning like what where did you reside my family's been all around and in my uh, young life compared to the rest of them I wouldn't really say I've had a uh, more permanent than other spot but I've been all around I'd say mainly I've been in Great Britain but uh, Definitely with, uh, as I'm sure from what you've heard, my father being who he is, and my mother who she was as well. Wait, so you didn't, you haven't been in America for too long then? Or would we, you say you pop back and forth? Our main house was in Great Britain, but mm -hmm. uh, once my father started doing this, we resided there. So I would say these last few years I've been in America. How long has your father waged the Sasquatch war on for? It's not been a war, but it's been an ongoing effort, but it's definitely picked up over the last three to four years. That probably is one of the reasons my mom's been away so much. And, I so, like and then I'll say, as I pay attention to Krogas, as he is about to talk, I guess I'll be like, same as mine. Damn. Wow. Parents at war. Krogas claps his hands Jeez. together. Says, all right, class, I will begin teaching. Krogas decides to first give you all a tour of every garden. He speaks, starting at the furthest to the left, we have magical herbs that are native to Africa. Very hard to grow in our climate, and if you cross the fence leading into the African garden, you will quickly see that the heat from the sun becomes a lot more intense. Students have had heat stroke very quickly, so just be wary of that, students. Moving on to the second garden at the left is filled with Japanese herbs, found obviously only in Japan. The garden we are standing in currently are herbs found in North America. Then he gestures behind him to the great snakewood tree. Its trunk, a 
spiraling of multiple layers of bark intertwining into a spire leading to dead branches growing no leaves. This is the legendary snakewood tree, he says. Zoltsayer planted her aunt's wand to signify rebirth of a new journey, a new school. Moving on, most herbs you will be dealing with in your first year are herbs in this area, within the North American herbs. But, I might as well tell you anyways, to the right of us is the Scandinavian garden, and to the right of that are the herbs found in Britain. As he continues to speak, talk about the many herbs in North America, you hear a hissing noise coming from the snakewood tree, Finn does. Oh, just me? And it says, come closer. It has a hiss to it, like, come closer. Can, is there any passive anything here that we notice? Nothing. I mean, do you do you look like confused or uncomfortable by that? Well, obviously. Okay, so you you don't have to roll. You just can see he looks uncomfortable. Uh, where's he? Where is he? Like, are are we all standing right You're now? You're like pretty much still? in the middle of the room. Standing, do I, yeah. Like, I hear where it's coming from. Yeah, you clearly hear it's coming from this tree. It's like emanating from it, like a like a heartbeat. Like, oh. there's no mistaking it is coming from that tree. Oh, is it just Kiana sitting next to me, right? Kiana is standing next to you. The rest of Thunderbird's next to you. I just yeah. ask her, I'm like, do you hear that? So Kiana looks at you, she's like, Krogast? No. The so, tree. So she looks at the tree. No. I'm, I'm gonna go to Kiana, I'm like, do you see anything? I want to look at them all confused, like, I don't know what y'all guys are seeing right now. So, Krogast claps his hands again, his massive hands clap together. Um, class, I would ask you respect me as when I talk, you are not talking. Is that understood, Thunderbird? Apologies, Professor. Yeah, the fault, the fault is mine. I just heard something. So he looks at you, he's like, you heard something? It was probably your classmates talking. Yeah, I, I, I'll just say, like, because I said the fault is mine, I'll be like, I, uh, was talking about, uh, something else we were talking about before class, Professor. Sorry for interrupting. Won't do it again. Sounds good. Apology accepted. Moving on. The first herb I will be teaching you, class, is known as Bonum Somnium, or in common tongue, tongue good, the good dreams herb. He's mostly in sleeping droughts. It is also said that this plant seeds, when placed under your pillow, will grant you safe and pleasant dreams. Within your house... Please come to me, and I will hand you your pot in which you will take the, um, the the good dreams herb, and you will try to pluck its ripe kernels from it. So lining up, I want to go grab. Yeah, you I'll grab it. Okay. So you grab it. Getting into groups, sitting on the dirt floor of the room. You guys gather your herbology tools. I the plant. Of, as I as I lift it up, I'm like I feel, I remember I know how to use one of these guys. Like all confident, just like not tossing it around, but just like you know playing with my hand. Oh, I love it! I love it. Yes, please. Okay, the the plant is a purple cob attached to a narrow, brittle stalk. This plant's height is about two feet, and no leaves will grow along the stalk. Along the cob are little white kernels. Scattered about, with five little roots growing from these kernels, like shaped like a star. Krogas speaks up, explaining, You will be extracting the seeds from the cob. This is the hardest part. It requires great focus, strategy, and the right tools. Once you pluck one seed, you have about one minute to extract the rest. The seeds must be wiggled gently out of the plant, or it will become very brittle, and if one root snaps, then this all the seeds lose all potency. So you have to be very careful. So, he says, all right, if everyone's ready, begin. Do we roll for... So you each would shit? roll herbology. Oh, we don't. Just no. herbology. Can I, no. can I roll first? Because I just feel like... Yeah, I you're roll. confident with the tools? I'm with this shit. You're plus five. That's not a sleight of hand thing? Or are you picking... So there's a strategy to it. Oh. You, if he fails, you can do sleight of hand. So if you want to do sleight of hand, by all means. My herbology is three. That's not five. My Plus herb. your tool proficiency, oh, so five. Tool. Oh, okay. True, true, true. Uh, eight. 
plus five. No, eight that's total. eight total. Oh, eight total. Good. Okay. Fireball. Herbology, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, you, you, yeah, you didn't succeed. Can I? Try, yeah. I guess mine's uh, my herbology is also is a uh, three. Okay. Roll. Eighteen plus that's three. Perfect. Yeah. You, you after looking at the plant, you see and understand what the teacher was <coughs> talking about. If you pull the kernel slightly out of the cob, very ever so slightly, then you don't detach the root, causing the cob to enter, enter its final lifespan. Mm -hmm. So now, carefully using sleight of hand, you need to pull these kernels slightly out. However, it's going to be a lot easier because you understand <coughs> the strategy behind it. Okay. So it's a sleight of hand roll. Of instead of DC 15, it's a DC 6 now. Okay. So can, I, let's roll. can I also... Actually, do you have an 8? Yeah. You automatically succeed. Okay. Oh. So I, I was literally about to say, I'm like, I was going to say to Finn, I was going to pass on to Finn. I'm like, I, I've seen your quick hands uh, before. Uh, now I want to pass on what I... So, so I guess so, it makes so sense. Just do it. Do I even have to roll? No. Oh, okay. Your steady hands <laughs> move in, carefully plucking That's each nice. one slightly out of the cob. No but again, not that. fully out. And then, because of this, the cob doesn't <coughs> enter its final lifespan. You <coughs> easily pluck each kernel out with ease, like nothing. In doing so, you extract about 12 seeds, causing you guys to lift up. Krogas comes over, counts the seed 12. Coming in first, you guys came first, thanks to Arthur's great herbology um, strategy in your sleight of hand. Puff Wedgie comes second, then Horned Serpent, then Wampus. Yeah, I want to put on my hand to Finn and be like, well done, nice hands. Thank you. So, and then right away, yeah, and then right away, I'll like pull back, be like, ah. Herbology, <laughs> I get it, I get it. Could have, used, could have used insight. What? I don't know. Eh, whatever. So, don't need to. I guess I could have. I don't know why. It's just like, fuck it. So, he comes over and he says, and because you guys won, you, instead, of just, or instead of just being awarded 20 house points for victory, I will allow you to keep these, say, uh, these seeds. Congratulations. Put them under your pillow. You'll have some nice, pleasant dreams tonight. I'll, I'll definitely, I'm going to take like two of them. <laughs> Well, we don't we don't have twelve people in our class, right? In your uh, no, don't we have six? You so six. Okay, okay yeah. So I'm definitely taking two. Yeah, yeah, you take two. Oh, no, I'll take two. I want to look to uh, Keanu when I can get them. I'm like, do you think your dreams will be different when you have these under your pillow? So she takes two of them. And says, I, I don't know, maybe. It'll be interesting to see. Mm hmm. I give her mine. Take mine too, just in case. Oh wow! So she, she says, "Wow, thank you. You don't have to do that, Finn." Does she give them back. No, she just says, like, you don't have to do it. Oh, She's not yeah, gonna... I was like, I was like <laughs> so take him back. <laughs> I, will, I wanted to say, like, Arthur sees it. Like, I'm not giving my seeds, but I'll, like, I'll see, like, the kindness. I'm not giving your seed, eh? <laughs> I'll see the kindness that they're doing, and I'll, I'll like, make no, make a mental note. Like, hmm. So Melvin, he's like, oh, I, I hope I dream of home as he takes his seeds. I forgot about that dude this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he's been quiet for one time he's been quiet my bad he's been learning um after you guys do that he keeps a quick history lesson on this plant nothing really too significant but he says alright that was class I can't wait to see you guys again next week for some more herbology lessons be like thank you professor you're very informative so I, love I want to tell him that I love his gardens down here. He says, thank you. Are you, a, are you an herbology uh, lover yeah. like me? Yeah, I do enjoy like this environment. I grew up on a farm. So seeing all these picket fences is, does bring back some memories for sure. So he's like, very cool. Are all of you herbology lovers or just Patrice? What can you tell me about that tree? I... So he looks at these like the snakewood tree? Yeah. Um, what do you want to know? Just anything? His old sayer's wand was planted and it sprouted into this wonderful tree. Why such curiosity for it? Have they not talked about it in history yet? No. Interesting. 
So you see Kiana, she looks at you and looks at the tree. And she puts her hand on the tree and she go, waves over to you. She's like, can I, can I touch you? Yeah. I, I wanted to talk to Krogast while they're doing that. Maybe the I'll minute... distract them a bit. <laughs> distract Krogast? Yeah, I, I oh, was actually yeah. going to ask talk to him. Yeah, like, so... Yeah, I'll let them do their thing first. So he begins talking to you. As Kiana touches your hand in the tree, her eyes go black. And she begins to speak in a language that the rest of you don't understand. You hear... Deep in my roots is a secret to your true bloodline. Come to me. And then the word stop. Her hands release from both the tree and you, and she falls to her knees. And when she looks up, you see her nose is bleeding. Uh, can you snap back to me? Because I definitely want to act on that. <laughs> yeah, so okay. Krugas yeah. goes over to talk to you. Yeah, so I just want to be like, I'm like, I learned uh, a bit about uh, her, her biology because of my mother. Her being uh, the alchemist that she was, I definitely need to know uh, about potions and certain materials with them. So he says, yes, it's your mother. Very good woman. Very upsetting to hear about her death. I'm sorry for your loss. I just want to... I was not ready to hear him say that. I was just, I was just like... <laughs> I, was, I, I just want to uh, straight away... I'll, I'll snap. Yeah, I'll snap. I'll, I'll just be like... As, you, as no, that happens. I, oh, I was... Oh, you see Kiana collapse. I'll immediately, like, run over to, like, that. Going over, and I'll, like, grab her. I'm like, Kiana. So Krogas runs over. He's like, students, what happened? Yeah. Flooding over there. Uh, her eyes went black. She got a bloody nose. I don't even know. I heard, I heard her scream something. Yeah. Did you hear what she said? I wanted to say to Krogas, I'm like, she was very lightheaded when coming to class uh, before. I'm not sure if maybe she ate something bad at uh, lunch. So, Krogas puts her in a bridal carry. He's like, I'll take her to the nurse right away. Students, please make your way towards your next class. I oh, want uh, I mean, she already has seeds, but I'll, I'll be like, Krogas, please let her have, like, this one seed. That, oh, so you give her, okay, so she's five seeds. If, yeah, if she... Okay. Bro, she's gonna OD on that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just never all wakes up. All about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, he runs her out of the room. Do we have another class, I guess, now? Yes, you have one class, and then you're done for the day. Holy fuck. Okay, I'll be like, guys, we should probably get the class. Bro, I'm just shook. Right? Yeah, I'm shook. I'm, I'm shook is okay. What's Victoria saying? Is she... Victoria was shocked. She's like, I swear to God, she spoke a whole different language. Wow. Uh, but yeah. you look like you understood her, Finn. Yeah. I don't know. She was talking nonsense. I don't know about another language, but it was nonsense. Look, let's talk about it in the common room, guys. Let's do our class and get that over with, okay? A lot's going on here. I'm looking forward to potions, actually. Herbology and potions seem cool. You guys carry on down the hallway. All of you kind of curious, but at the same time... <laughs> nervous? To really uh, understand what the heck's going on. As you carry on, Potions is literally on the other side, on the right wing of this floor. So you literally do a U-shaped loop around to the other side. As you enter the Potions class, you guys feel tired from the day, however excited that it's your final class for dinner. You walk down the hallway leading to the class. It has four labs set up with burners, beakers, vials, scales, flasks, and small cauldrons to the left of you in smaller rooms. Carrying on forward leads to the bigger classroom where bookshelves and cabinets cover the walls holding potions and different grounded up herbs. The small classroom is very cramped. Desks are close together. Then there's a barely enough room to pull your chair out. The front of the class is a desk with a potions kit on top. Standing behind that desk is Professor Duforn, a plump man with a head that is mostly chubby cheeks and a mustache shaped like a crescent moon curls around his cheeks and completely covers his mouth. His belly is so big the buttons holding his cloak together looks as if they're going to explode off like a bullet. He walks with a slight waddle and on top of his round appearance he's very cheerful and energetic as a teacher, encapsulating everyone who attends his lectures. Guys take your seat again, once again in your house rows. 
And he begins to talk. He's like, welcome, 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 class. And you see, you notice on his hands, he's got like jelly or jam or something on. He notices right away. He begins to wipe it on his cloak. And he's like, today, 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 I will be teaching you the concoction that is very deadly. If you drink this, it'll confuse you so bad, you'll begin to spin in circles for hours before realizing you've been spinning in circles for hours. It's a great tool to use against no magists who think they saw you use magic. And he winks at the class. He's like, but you guys won't have that issue until your later years. All right. So he slaps his hands together. He rubs them together. And he says, all right, let's head to the labs. Pick a cauldron. And with your house, open your textbook and begin brewing. Okay. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess we have to like roll for our respective things here. Does this work for like, does this format work for your no, so this is going to be purely... So I'm only going to use those for Charm Strange Speculations. Oh, okay, okay. With Dark Arts. Um, so, as you guys reach the the lab, you pick a cauldron pertaining to your house. Opening your textbook, I need you guys to roll for potions to brew the confusion concoction. Well, I guess I'll roll. I have a uh, five in potions. Sure. If you actually all want to do a roll, do that. Yeah, I, just, I have a minus 15 in potions. I got a nat 20. Oh, minus 15 in potions? Like, different. Oh, yeah, right. Really nice All right, roll as well. I have a nat 20. Cool, plus, roll as well because you have multiple five, things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, was the one I studied for. At the Wait, so we don't just get the potion? 10. Oh, well, yeah, minus plus, 15. Okay, yeah, roll. So you succeeded as well? Wait. You will, yeah. So there's, like, different mechanics in brewing the potion, you'll see. Oh, so we're just brewing it right now. Yeah. We don't have it. Yeah. 13. I got 13. Nice, okay. Wow, nice. Good roll. Plus a 1. So, I mean, so it's still good. Okay. Every number matters. Open your textbook. You read quickly how to make a confusion concoction. You mix one bundle of liverwort, two flasks of ethanol, and for um, Finn, he begins to stir counterclockwise for one minute after Arthur and Patrice add these ingredients. The cauldron begins to heat up more as you stir. Then... Patrice grabs the hodag tongue, adding it, and Arthur, with a flick of his wand, casts Inferma Cerebra to the potion, fully completing it. Afterwards, you each take a flask, dipping it in, you each receive one confusion concoction. So, Melvin, Victoria... Uh, look at you guys like we didn't even really have to do anything so next time if you guys don't mind let can we do are you okay if we try you guys have been really carrying us well i'd still love to try i'm like i don't know about these two yeah i think we can we should rotate two at, two go ahead. Or something. Go ahead. so they go in they begin to try as well brewing their own version melvin's absolute ass rolling a one and Melvin, Melvin adds more, <laughs> adds another hodag tongue. Victoria says, no, 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 you're at the wrong step. Victoria, however, also too, begins stirring it at the wrong moment, causing the potion, the cauldron to shake, and a puff of, a plume of smoke spits out, causing the room, the whole ceiling to turn into like the smog, in which people start oh, coughing man. and just like starting to like wobble as if they're drunk. I want to say, I just want to, I'll, I'll go like this and sort of say, maybe that not yeah. be in the smoke or some yeah, shit. Man. Like, but my fucking, like, <laughs> so you guys quickly exit out of the room after this happens, covering your mouths, yeah. not breathing it in. <laughs> Dufourn comes over. Let's see you guys each holding your own flasks. Says, wow, students, very well done. And then he looks in the room, he's like, oh, and he runs in, waving his wand, the smoke clears back into the cauldron, he waves his wand again, and then somehow it just like, drains the liquid from the cauldron but the liquid doesn't go anywhere it just drains so he says all right how did everyone do you guys finished way ahead of everybody everybody was only halfway through their potions by the time you guys finished wow so do forward says all right very well done pops open a uh flask drinks it he says all right hand me one of your potions i'll hand him mine he drinks it begins to toss and turn and he's like oh my god fantastic i feel so confused so but then he feels re-energized as he drank a potion that counters the effect he's like okay wow 
Very well done. Very well done. Well, uh, Thunderbird, 20 points. Going over to everyone else. He drinks the potions one by one. More disappointed as he moves down the houses. Going from Puckwudgie, he drinks it. He's disappointed, but not too disappointed. Wampus, he looks very disappointed. And Horned Serpent, he just almost looks like infuriated. He looks at them, he says, Next time, please read the textbook, students. Very disappointing first uh, first uh, practical display of potions. He says, alright, good class. Come back, come back to the actual class and we'll discuss more of the theory of potion making. Wait, do we keep these? You do keep these. He hands was, you a brand new one. Yeah, I was just... Was anything different with mine? Because we all did, like, different things. Yeah, or is it just... only affect combat, though. Oh, Quickly, it doesn't yeah. do anything nah, else? It just, oh, okay. it, yeah, it just means you just rolled a really high number. Oh, okay. Um... Nah, you know what? Fuck it, I'll do the Numenera way. Because you rolled a d20 on it. Um, potions, you're supposed to... I, this is another homebrew rule I made. Potions for like the saving throws for a constitution save. It's 8 plus your potion skill plus your spell cast modifier. However, for you, it's going to start at 10. So for this potion, it's going to be 10. What's your potion skill? Uh, 5. So 15 plus your spell cast modifier. Which is 4. So they'd have to roll a 19 constitution save. Holy. Dude, your potion deadly. I didn't realize how freaking wow. Wait, to survive the poison and shit? Yeah. Okay. He explains some theory. Class flies by quickly. And it ends. And Duforn says, well, that's the last class. Everyone go enjoy dinner in the Great Hall. And I hope to... I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Class dismissed. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then... Uh, I want to say I head to... Uh, the, like, nurse's room or, like, wherever Kiana went. I'm not saying anything to, like, them. I just say, like, immediately, like, I'll go out. I thought we'd all go. So, Victoria yeah, says... Yeah, I see Arthur going... Yeah, I, I'm there. just saying, like, I'm I trying to know. say, like, I literally, like, that was the first thing on my mind. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, like, I, I was thinking on it, too, but... So, I get um, it. you guys leave. You hear Evelyn call out to Melvin. And at the same time, Ayana calls out to, um, Patrice. Wait, be it... Like, we hear that? You ran off already. Okay. So, you hear it. Same with Victoria, because she's tied the hip to you. Yeah. So, you hear Evelyn call out to Rupert. She's like, Rupert! Is that Melvin? Or, or, fuck. Melvin, thank you. you. Did that last game. I always got the names confused. And then Ayana calls out to Patrice. She's like, Patrice, can, can I just talk to you quick? Yeah. Obviously, I don't really care about that. Obviously, right? you care about Melvin, though? No. I mean, like, the, the, his thing is just, like, I feel like he's just doing his thing anyway. Are you going to go to see Melvin or no? Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just listening. That's, I'm gonna... what, that's what I was going <laughs> Melvin, Melvin approaches Evelyn, where you overhear a dis uh, discussion. Evelyn talks about meeting Melvin oh, in the advanced the... combat room on the dungeons level. School shooting shit, isn't it? And she, challenged, she, she accepts Melvin's challenge to a duel. Fuck. So Victoria's like, well, what did you hear? So I heard that? Yeah. It's like, Melvin wants to duel Evelyn. She's like, uh, uh, what do we do? Well, I guess we go see if he's alright. So you're gonna walk over to Melvin right now? Yeah. So as you walk over to Melvin, Melvin turns to you looking very confident. Walks up to you. Evelyn re go, rejoins Horn Serpent, still in the class. Melvin goes up to you and he says, "Um, I won't be at the Great Hall table for a little bit, but I'm just going back to the dormitory." You clearly see he's lying, and obviously overhearing this conversation, you know he's lying. It's like, no, you're not. So he just looks at you like dumbfounded. He's like, well, "Yeah, I am." No. Hey, you're going. You? You're going to fight. So you're he like he nervously looks. Why? So he looks down and he's like, Evelyn thinks she can bully us. But she's worse than us. She's like, but it doesn't, he's like, it doesn't matter. They should always stick up for yourself. What do you have to prove to her? So he looks down, he looks back at where Arthur was sitting and he says, I have, I have everything to prove. Your issue with him is not with her. 
So, but if I can beat her, then I I hope I can beat him. I mean, if that's what you think. But... All right, let's go then. So Melvin's like, what do you mean let's go? It's just between her and I. Yeah, I'm going. I want to, like, so... Yeah, I want to, like, Moe, they want to come like, ask her what she wants to talk about when that's all going on, too. And Helen whispers in your ear. She's like, did you read my note? I want to look around and make sure it's just, like, her and I. Just and you like, and her, yeah. Two forms like, packing up his shit. I'm like, I haven't looked at it yet. And then I want to pull it out in front of her and read it. And she says... It says, tonight after curfew... Meet me, meet me outside your dormitory, and we will head to the creature's lab and free the Sasquatch. Tonight? I don't think we can do that. She's like, I know we can. So she says, she looks at Dufour and she's like, he's packing up his stuff when he leaves real quickly. And she turns to like, like the third chapter in the potions book. She's like, we can brew an invisibility potion. We can make our way to the creature's lab. And I overheard teachers talking about a... A port key within the foundry, the wands making lab that leads to the Brightwood. So if we can get the Sasquatch there, we can get him out of here. Hey, I'd, I'd honestly love to, and it sounds like you have this beautifully planned out. But I haven't been to any of those places you've talked about, and I don't think I should go. And on top of that, my housemate's in the infirmary right now, and I think I have to see her first. So she takes a step back, she's like, I thought you cared about the Sasquatch. I care about us as well. Oh. Oh. Us. Choosing oh. his house, his community over preservation. You know, and that hits too because of our conversation. Yeah, man. Holy Damn. fuck. Damn. Eana pushes past you. She stops and she says, actually, give me that note. Just want to hand it to her. So she takes it, she rips it into multiple bits. I don't know, as she's walking away, I'm like, don't do something that will hurt you will inhibit you for like your life she's like at least at least that creature won't be tortured you can save many more by taking another path I guarantee you that Ayana persuasion sir damn oh, nice. my saber too 11 plus persuasion. Oh, 2 so 13 Ayana hears your words but it just doesn't hit where it needs to. She oh, shakes her head, no. says, you'll never understand. My tribe, what do we stand for, is protection of the magical world and the creatures that inhabit it. Mm -hmm. Not not Makusa, not Ilvermorny, the creatures that we're at balance with. But you don't understand that. I apologize, I don't know. I want to just walk away back to... Uh... So, she leaves... As she, actually, as she's leaving, I just want to sort of hang around and go back to uh, the garden for uh, to see Krogast. Oh, cool. So you make your way towards the garden. Oh, excuse me. You guys, I need you to do a... You guys see the advanced combat room, which is a four... Level, you're at potion. No, it's not. It's on the same floor. Just make your way there. However, there's a Pukwudgie guarding the front entrance. However, Gerard comes up. He's like, don't worry, Evelyn. I'll take care of it. He goes up to the Pukwudgie, casting a spell that causes flowers to grow from its quills. The Pukwudgie angrily begins to chase after him. So Gerard leads the Pukwudgie away from the entrance into the room. Melvin and... Evelyn begin to stroll into the advanced combat room. This room is a massive assembly with five long oak tables laid uh, laid out, clearly meant for the dueling club. Melvin stands on top, one of the middle dueling tables, with Evelyn on the other side. Victoria looks at you, she's like, should we not stop this? Um... I'm going to go up to Evelyn. So as you step up, she points her wand at you and says, What do you want? Don't you know it's impolite to interrupt a duel? Listen, I was just going to tell you, don't do anything stupid. Keep it light. All right? 
Persuasion. Fuck. That's it. <sighs> Fuck. I mean, we we in a bad spot right now. I left my. I got house. fourteen plus. Plus persuasion. my persuasion is a three. Whoa! Shakes her head. She's like, "Fine, I'll take it easy on Melvin." Melvin looks at you. He's like, "I don't want that. I told you that. I don't want that. Stop stepping in, Finn." I'm like, all right. Nothing so, I can do. Go ahead. Damn, dude. Oh, wait. So you're saying for Evelyn to not hold back? No, to. I, I'm just saying that to him. It's like, man, just do it. Do it. So she's. He told her to hold back. Oh. Don't go so hard. Mm-hmm. So. They walk forward. They bow, they spin around, taking 10 steps away from each other. They quickly spin, and let's see who goes first. Evelyn rolled a 13. Melvin rolled an 18. Melvin. Wait, this is bad on me. (laughs) Why is it bad on you? I did this. What do you mean you did this? The reason he wants to fight her. But also, if he beats her... After you, yeah, he's coming after you next. No matter what, we got a school shooter. Melvin <laughs> yells Sagittario, what casting a transfiguration spell. A blue arrow forms in front of his wand, and then he waves, he draws out a triangle. Then he casts in the middle of the triangle, shooting an arrow towards her. Oh my god, it hits her directly. I need a uh, hold on, Sagittario. I think I need a D six or D eight. Oh my God, Sagittario! I need a D eight. Damn, bro. Where's the? Oh my god! He knocked her out one hit. She flies off the table, smashing into the stone brick flooring. Knocks completely out. Victoria is stunned. Her jaw hits the ground. Melvin, he's like, Yeah! Yeah! She thinks his wand, he's like, That's right. And he looks back at you. And then he's like, and she didn't even hold back. And he hops off the stage, walks towards you. He's like, let's go see Kiana. And you see Melvin has got his confidence back. Bro, but just look over at her. It's like, she, she's alive. <laughs> Victoria says, I, I think she's alive. All right, we got to go. We, we got to go. We got to go. Let's go. So you guys leave the room. And as you leave the room, Gerard runs up the stairs past you, looking over. The Puckwudgie stops, looking at you guys like, Hey, why were you in there? And the Puckwudgie starts to run towards you guys. So Melvin, doing an athletics roll, is not athletic at all as he rolls a one. Uh, Victoria, eight plus the two. For all it, it has to be athletics? What else would you want to do? You want know, to parkour, like jump off the walls up the stairs? Stealth. I was just, I was just gonna talk to him. <laughs> yeah, sure. So the puck would you, Melvin? I feel like I have a better chance with that. My athletics are fucked. Melvin tries to run. However, <laughs> trips over his own shoes, hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Victoria actually runs up the stairs, leaving you and Melvin behind. And the puck you comes over, grabbing you both. She's like, "Why were?" He's like, "Why were you two in there?" Like me and Victoria? Or, or sorry, you and Melvin. Oh. Victoria booked it. She's gone. Mm-hmm. Fuck, let me think of a reason right now. Good, what do you think of that? You're in herbology. You walk in, Krogas is trimming a plant. It's a tall plant, about seven feet tall. Multiple leaves growing up its main stem. And the top, it's got like three bulbous-like bulbs. Where they're almost like eyes, like they blink. Like, these leaves grow over it, blinking for it, but they're not eyes. So he looks back, he's like, oh. Street lamp sort of things? Yeah, yeah, kind of. So he looks back at you, he's like, oh, uh, Patrice, what are you doing back here? I was just curious. I wanted to see some of your plants. Uh, What's this one you're looking at right now? So, this one. I ain't gonna succeed. 
I don't know. I don't know a good yeah. reason why the fuck am I up there. <laughs> Did I leave something? This one is known as Lux Luke. It's a European plant. After you cut the bulbs off, if you store them in a dark room, they'll shed light. Lux Luke? Yep. Also known as the bright light bulb. So, he, uh, he trims one of the bulbs off, throwing it to you. He's like, keep it. Yeah, hey, thank you, Mr. Crowgrass. I also wanted to ask you about the, what you think of the zoology area of uh, Overmorny. So he says, Ember, very proficient hunter. However, I prefer to read more texts around taming. She is still a very skilled wizard in what she does. That's interesting. I want to tell you this because I trust you, but I heard that some of the students didn't take it too well seeing the Sasquatch in there and that something might happen later with it. Like some liberation of sorts. So he stopped. He's like, what do you mean liberation? Someone might try to break them out. And who did you hear this from, student? I just, it was just rumors around. Rumors around town. If you ask, if you ask Ember, I'm sure she would tell you who she think it would be. Deception roll? Can I just pause it? No, no, I'm good. Seven plus. What's your deception? Two, so set nine. Oh, you need a ten. <laughs> Crowcast looks at you, he's like, listen. And he, he crouches down so he's the same level as you. He says, listen, what you're bringing to me is very important information, and if this is going to happen, it could possibly be dangerous to other students if the Sasquatch gets loose. I need to know who talked about this so I can stop it from happening. You're doing the right thing here. It was the, it was Ayana from Wampus. Cutting over to Arthur. You walk into the medical room. Multiple beds have been laid out. The nurse isn't there though. You see the headmistress hunched over the table, waving her hand over Kiana's head. She's completely knocked out laying in this bed. Can I like roll to see if, like if she's doing anything to Kiana? So roll for perception. Perception is a three, I believe, yeah. Eight plus three, 11. She, it just, from your perspective, it looks like she just waved her hand over her head. Oh. I'll be like, Kiana. So, As I, like, uh, get in there, I'll be like, how's she doing? So the headmistress stands up a little taller, not much, only a few inches. Again, still hunched over. She looks back at you, and she says, Kiana is fine. Don't worry, Arthur. I have the right to uh, worry about a housemate. Azini slowly walks towards you again still hunched over she says you know it's very nice to see another student caring for another student and i want to say that it's very admirable something that uh was very much displayed in your brother in his early years have i formally introduced myself mr arthur i i don't believe we have met uh ma'am so he says, so she says, I'm Headmistress Izzini of Overmorny. As you look at her. I, I just want to like bow and cool. everything and be like, be and, then, and then I'll put on my hand. I'm like, I, I'm Arthur Gray. So you shake it. She has very rough, coarse hands as if she was a peasant her whole, her whole <laughs> life. Her ebony skin shines within the lighting of the room, but you can see her eyes are very tired as if she works non-stop oh can i say i'm like ma'am with all due respect i mean no uh uh disrespect of course i'm um, like you look a bit tired and i'm sure you are as i'm familiar with people who are at the top of what they're in i'm like if you want i'll stay by kiana i'm sure you'd either like the rest or have something else you could do so she says that sounds very nice thank you i was just making sure she was okay and she begins to hobble out of the room slowly. And she says, make sure you take care of yourself, Arthur. I'll, I'll be like, I, I will. She leaves the room. You stand beside Kiana, whose nose has stopped bleeding. She looks very pale. And she begins to wake up in this moment. She's like, oh, 
Oh, and she looks over at you. She's like, Who, who's there? It's Arthur. She's like, oh, where's everyone else? I... They were just getting out of class. So... She, uh, she, she reaches over to touch you. I'll, like, uh, just, like, like, instantly step back, but then, like, I'll go for the hand. Like, maybe she's going for balance. Just, like, hold my hand out like this and everything. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, as she lays down, she touches your hand. She's, and then she smiles. She's like, there you are. I can see you now. And, um, she says, thank you for coming to yeah, visit me. I'm going to, like, put her hand back on, like, her bed and, like, then back in my son. Like, how are you doing? She's like, I feel a lot better. Good to hear. Cause I'm like, I told you. I'm like a little like, I'm like, I told you. I'm like, we should have gone to the nurse right away. She's like, yeah, I, I thought I was fine, but I wasn't. Yeah. I'll be, uh, I'll say, you know, it's, maybe it's weird to me, but because I know you've seen what's in my head, it's, it makes me feel a bit different towards you than the others. So, she says, well, of course, I I get that a lot. That's why I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't really uh, take friends anymore. As, But I'm sure you already know that. So, she looks at you, but then she looks past you. And as she looks past you, she says... I think I'm, I think I'm very tired. You want to stay here or are you able to leave or would you rather me take you back to your dorm? So she says, that won't be necessary. I think your brother will escort you out. In that moment, Arthos speaks and he says, brother, I've been looking all over school for you. I'm just going to be standing at Kiana. Do I see where like her uh, seeds are, by the way? Yeah. Okay, I'll be. Able, I'm just gonna grab one from there and like put it under her pillow. Oh, look at you, put man. it under her pillow before I turn around and be like, Arthos. So he says, Arthur, come with me. It's time we talk. I'll be like, I, I won't act. I'll just straight back. Be like, let's go. So what does your brother look like again? Imagine like a uh, carbon copy of me, but a lot older. Older. Okay. Uh, I have dirty blonde hair. Let's just say he has uh, beard. Like, uh, yeah, he has a beard and then he brown hair. Okay, so brown hair. I'm assuming short, clean cut, yeah. clean cut beard, very pish posh with his cloak, hands behind his back. You follow in behind him. I want to also say like when I saw like correct study, like hands behind my back too and everything, like uh, all like what I was taught proper. So as you walk beside him, he says, "Watch your sentimentalities. These students mean nothing." I think you have me confused for someone that uh, still has that same hope. I lost that three years ago. Wow. After you, you also left me. Oh, shit. But so, I'm not complaining as it's made me who I am. Arthur smiles. And he's like, I know you've never been one for complaining, Arthur. That's why father loves you so much. As you guys walk, Pukwudgie salute your brother as if he's some sort of military commander. This takes a few students off guard, and even some Pukwudgie look a bit uncomfortable oh, with I'm it. I'm walking with my brother too. Yes, yeah. so you're walking down this hallway beside him. Pukwudgie saluting you. Students getting out of the way. Your brother looks around. He's like, I'm glad they understand the hierarchy of power here still. Cutting over to Finn. Seems like you guys are gonna have a fun time at dinner in the Great Hall. Yeah, okay. Wow. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, what happened? Well, where the puck wedgie. Where did we leave off? Okay. Why were you two in that room? Uh, I was looking for a photo of my father. Deception roll, please. Okay. Bad. Shit. Motherfucker. Roll. A one. <laughs> the puck wedgie says. I have heard some stupid, stupid student excuses, but that? You went looking for a picture of old Papa? No, 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 no. You're coming to the headmistress's office. This is detention. 
what house are you in? And he looks at your brooch. He's like, Thunderbird, sneaking around. He looks at Melvin. He picks him up, too, with his great strength. He's like, both of you sneaking around. Minus 30 points to to uh, Thunderbird. Man, the ones, bro. The ones be killing us. I mean, me. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Look. No matter what. Like, bro, I had a one in athletics. So it doesn't even matter what my fucking so much shit changed. is. Oh, fuck. It doesn't even matter what my deception persuasion is if you hit a one, right? Like, yeah, it's Not really, no. Like, unless it's a plus four and it was like a five rule you had to roll, maybe, but... Uh, um, I have a three. <laughs> Dude, the one's got to absolutely hold you. I mean, Thunderbird. So... <laughs> wow. It's not like we're not in the lead by like 100 points anyway. Come on. <laughs> You guys would be in the lead now by 2030. We've dominated minus actually our classes. We've dominated You guys only went up by 10, so you're at 75 now. Because you got so many negative points. Yeah, but we're still in the lead. Yeah, like we're still yeah we, we've been dominating. Oh, yeah, 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 we've been dominating our classes. Just okay, half. so let's, let's go ahead, mistresses. Got it. Yeah, so. Fuck. Fucking Melvin, man. <laughs> Dude, that one shot at Melvin, bro. So, as you guys are going up the stairs, you look back to see Evelyn carefully sneaking out of the room, moving her way out before the puck wedgie looks back to notice her. What am I supposed to do? Say, hey, what are you doing? I'll just, I'll look to the puck wedgie and be like, hey, you missed one. He looks back seeing Evelyn, letting you two go. He's like, hey, and he runs down the stairs after her. And we gone? So Melvin's like, ah! This is athletics now? Bro, this guy's gone. How Melvin <laughs> rolled a fucking one again. So he's gone. Yeah, sure. Melvin, though, anxious to get away, trips on himself again, falling up the stairs. But then he just gets on his all four and starts running up like a dog. Either way. He's Either dead. way, you're, you're literally walking up, he's, though. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, gone. You walk up I'm slowly, scared. carefully. Yes. Melvin's, like, running up like a dog. He's, he's just looking. He is a dog after what he did. <laughs> he's a fucking dog. So I guess you guys didn't really lose those points. Facts. Ooh. Clutch. Somehow. Fucking Evelyn. Evelyn <laughs> just got her ass knocked out by Melvin, then caught. <laughs> That's a bad <laughs> night. Plus she was up to some sneaky shit earlier we I, don't know about. I don't know. With Melvin's confidence and now if he comes up to me, especially now, I don't I don't know, <laughs> yo, I don't know. Crowgast. Looks at you, says, Ayana, do you know where she is now? No, probably. I don't know if she wants. She talked about this with other wampuses, or wampi, as I like to call them. It's like they are wampi, that is the plural. <laughs> but yeah, all I know is that that was something. It was a communique. But yeah, I don't know. nonetheless. I'm French, bro. What the fuck? So he says, do you, do you know how she's going to do this? Because it's pretty hard to break into the Magizoology lab. I don't know how she's going to do it, but I can tell you one thing about Ayana is that she's one of the most bravest, she's one of the most brave women I've ever met. So I could, I, she'll, she'll go for the bold, that's for sure. So Krogan says, I think if you're doing the right thing, I'll make sure your house is rewarded points for honesty as well as transparency. Thank you. So an extra 10 points there. Then I want to immediately go to see Kiana and see if I can catch, even see. Oh, right. Or I guess you might snitch. straight up walk into us. Mm -hmm. Oh, as you, you going there too? Yeah, so as you leave the, um, mm -hmm. well, you're going to climb up what? Oh, no, no. Okay, you're good. As you leave, as you come down the hallway out of the herbology, yeah. As you're leaving the herbology, you see Evelyn running past the hallway with a puck wedgie chasing behind her. <laughs> screaming, it was Melvin, it was Melvin! Continuing up, Melvin, running like a dog, runs up the stairs, totally like javelining himself into Arthos. <gasps> Smashing into him, Arthas stumbles along the wall. Looking down with fury in the eye, grabs Melvin by the nape of his neck. Picking him up, he puts his wand right to his chin. He says, do you know what you've just done, little boy? 
And Melvin looks at him with fear. Just absolute fear. And he's like, I, he looks at you, he's like, I, I yeah. beat Evelyn? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ignore it, be like, what the fuck? I'm gonna uh, say it Arthos. I'm like, Arthos, this fool doesn't have any idea what he's doing. He's a snob. He's lost all the time. Was, spending any time for him hating you is worthless to you. Oh my god. Wait, what happened? Did he just run into his, like, legs or something? Yeah, he pretty bounced himself into his legs. Like, I'm, I'll just say, like, just let him down and just forget about him. So, he holds him by the nape of the neck, he throws him to the ground, he's like, get out of my sight, swine. You come up the stairs seeing this. Arthos looks at you. I want to say I just eyeball, like, Finn, and, like, kind of, like, intimidation, where, like, I'm different from how they've all seen me ball, so at the oh, same time... Hold the meters change? Yeah, hold the meters change, but at the same time, I'm going to eyeball him, kind of, if he thinks of anything, the eyes kind of say, don't, like, this is... This is a, like, this is a Matt versus character moment right now, and I'm sorry. It's okay, man. Do what you gotta do. You do what you have to do, man. See, he's noticeably older, right? Oh, yeah. He's okay. gotta be, like, you'd say early 30s? No, late 20s, late 20s. Late 20s. Is this daddy? I'm like, I'm like, for your sake and for Melvin's, you're lucky it isn't. I feel like I can sense the, like, the seriousness in his tone. Yeah, your insight tells you he is very serious. This is a very important figure within Makusa, as he's wearing the Makusa uniform. On top of it, is yeah, Arthur's whole demeanor has changed. Okay, I'll give his brother the quick up and down, and then just pick up Melvin and carry on. You do that. Behind you, after you pick up Melvin... Patrice comes up the stairs. I want to walk up and see. Well, I'll first observe, obviously, uh, Arthos. Uh, and just, like, sort of look at him. And obviously, hit the mirror, maybe. Are you right behind him? Or is he just, I'm, like, right beside him. Yeah, and sort of, I'll, like, see Arthur still, as well. I'm still going to, I'm going to give you, like, the eyes look, too. Yeah. But, again, Re- demeanor's change. Yeah. I recognize the demeanor. I'd just be, like, I would sort of, just, like, look at him and be, like, so how's Kiana doing? She's good. I was talking to her, but she was very tired and was getting some rest. All right. I still think we should all meet up in the common room soon. But I guess we need to eat dinner first. It's been a long day. Arthur looks at you. He's like, you're dismissed, Arthur. Go hang out with your... And he looks at each one of you. He's like, you're disgusting house. Make sure you teach them proper mannerisms. How, how do you say we're disgusting? We're on the leaderboard right now. So he looks at the house I, I want to also say, I'm, I'm going to say, Patrice, watch yourself. He looks at the house points, or points, looking at them, he laughs, and he says, that's it? It's the first day. You got no lead. Can I just look at, uh... Arthos? Arthos is attire. Yeah. Everything he has on him. Yeah. So just you see, he's, he's carrying some sort of coin pouch at his hip. He's got a black... Not baggy, but kind of like cloak tucked in around his belt. He's wearing all black. He's got the Makusa insignia on his shoulder. His wand is holstered at its right side. Um, and aside from that, his hood's down. He's got a hood attached to the cloak. What is this man planning? Yeah, I'll go. When I see him, I'll go. Uh, Can I, I see that he's yeah, looking and checking out my? Uh, that'd be for. Was that insight? Is or that insight? Is that passive? It's or perception. But are you? What? Are you looking to steal his wand? Nor anything. Not, wait, what was that coin purse? He said he had. He has a. What are they called? Galleons. He's got a galleon purse. That would be more what I'd probably be looking at. I'm just looking at it. He can do a perception roll if you, you want. Have to do a you just see him eyeball. Yeah, the, yeah I want to, because then like I'll be like. You have to roll. You just okay. see his eye lines locked in on that thing. Nat uh, twenty. Yeah, I don't even it was regardless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. You just look, no, but I mean I'm like looking, yeah. I'm just looking, pondering like. Mm. Yeah, that's. I, 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 I just want to make sure. I'll, I'll look away. at him and just shake my head and be like. No. no. Wait, wait, what are you doing? I'm coming over like in what. You, like that? you're walking in front of the high line? Is yeah. that what you're doing? Where were you guys? Did you guys go check out Kiana as well or No, let's go. Let's go. I just I shake my head like next time. Next time. And I wanna look at Melvin too, like what's that what happened to you? Like, cause he's on the ground still, right? 
Melvin, after I'm getting up, after Finn helped him up, Melvin pulls out his wand, twirling it in his hand. However, he sends it, hitting himself in the eye. He's like, ah, I, I beat Evelyn. And he picks his wand back up. In that duel? He's like, in that duel. And he goes to twirl his wand again. However, he like throws it up in the air like a baton. And then he tries to catch it, but he fumbles around with it. So I'm proud of you, bro. Good job. Arthos looks over at you and he's like, oh, I'm leaving now. You're dismissed. And he goes down the, uh, he starts to walk down the stairs. That's it. That's our grand uh, uh, introduction after three years, Arthos. You at least going to tell me what you're here for. So I'm here you said you were looking on, for me. I'm here on father's orders to train the Pukwudgie to be yeah. better security so that his little son has a good experience at school. We're both his son, Arthos. And I think you forget the years before where he was favored you wow holy shit so arthos he speaks nothing to that but you can tell he looks tense about it yeah so he says carry on i'm like i I want to like uh say i'm like it's good to see you arthos and then I'll, i'll keep walking you guys, you guys gonna go over to the Great Hall table where you sit? I thought we were going to see Kiana. What the fuck? You guys wanna go see Kiana? Yeah, we'll go. We didn't see her yet. Yeah, okay. we're gonna go see Kiana. Well, as far as we know, she's fucked up. Right? Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Trust in me, huh? I see what? how it is. Nice. I was asked how Kiana was by him. And I, well, I, are you not with us right now? Like, you No, I, I'm not with you guys. Yeah, right but you now. were in front of your brother. Like, I didn't know if you were just, like, we don't know if you're just putting on a front. Just well, like, yeah, I thought the brother, okay. brother no, that's a fair out. thing. The brother just assume, dipped. Yeah. Where are you? Are, you are, I thought you were. Oh, I thought they went off. Okay, yeah. They oh, yeah, no, they haven't went off yet. Yeah, well, like, okay, we yeah. Just, I'll, we I'll go. There, I'll go walk. Happened. I thought we started walking as soon as like he was talking to his brother. We were already walking. Oh, okay. you're walking. So I'll, I thought go we were walking to... towards. Oh, I, I guess I, I, I see. I approached them, right? you. Yeah, yeah. You approached us, and then we were like, "Yeah, we're going to see her." And then he was like saying goodbye to his brother. Yeah, I'm not gonna run, but like I'll walk, keep my eyes on them. Right? Oh yeah. I guess it was all like similar time, but anyways, we're going to see her. Yep. At least I was. Yeah. I want to turn to him. I want to turn to Arthur. He's like, you see, the fuck he, is yeah, the Arthur's story. dragging. <laughs> He's a good question. <laughs> Where did you walk off to? <laughs> you look around, around. You don't see her anywhere. You're like, where the fuck is she? She's just hiding. I don't know. She's, she may be probably already eating dinner, huh? Maybe. Maybe she ran she, back to the dormitory, hid under her bed. Oh, Victoria. Yeah, she was. That's not. That's not a lane she was supposed to be in. No. Ever. She was supposed to. Okay, we got it. Sorry. On the way to see Kiana, let's go. She's well, Arthur, asleep. do you want to see Kiana? You said we talk about it later. Should we let her rest? Like, what do you think is the best diagnostic? I, I want to say my domain is still the same when, as if when I was with my brother. I'll be like, I already went to see her. She said she was tired and is going to rest. I put a seat under her bed, and I think it's best we leave her as she was pale. Let's go eat. I agree. We need to give her some time to rest. Well, I'm going to go check on her anyway. Oh, funny enough. Okay. Continuing to check on her, moving your way towards her. Are you also going to go back to the Great Hall to eat? Or yeah, you gonna I'm going to go back. And is Melvin coming back with me? Melvin's going to come back with you. Okay. Melvin's like, I, if Kaelin is fine, she's fine. I'm going to go and eat. I want him to debrief me on the whole fight when we're walking. Let's like, get hype about it. So he's like, I guess I'm hearing this too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so he's like, I hopped on the table. We bowed. He takes his wand out. He blows like the tip. He's like, we, we bowed. Ten steps back, I turned around and just boom, knocked her right off, knocked out cold like that easy. She was shaking in her boots the whole duel. Maybe that will teach her. The worst part is I couldn't even like if you didn't believe him, I couldn't back up the story I'm not there. The best part is though is you told her to go easy on him. Yeah, so, they don't even, know that. She didn't even get a chance. <laughs> so Melvin's like, yeah, the best part is Finn, Victoria watched the whole thing. They were clapping the whole time, cheering, because I'm so good. And he twirls his wand again, this time actually catching it. And he looks surprised. He was like. <laughs> oh, Finn, good job, though. I, I, rep- I like how you uh, accepted the challenge and rose to the occasion. So he's like, thank you. It's all to show that, and he looks at you, he's like, that I am a good leader. And he holsters his wand. Leader wouldn't risk jeopardizing his health points or doing something that has no meaning. You want to be a leader? How about you help us in classes? Wow. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> Melvin's whole demeanor, his fragile self esteem, changes. Because my, my demeanor is still the same as if I was with yeah. my brother. I wish his I was confidence the same destroyed again. <laughs> Melvin. <laughs> 
all your <laughs> shit on in. This dude was nasty. You didn't see it. You guys, you begin to walk over to the medical lab or medical room. Yeah. The nurse's office, rather. As you walk, you walk by your father's portrait again. But there's a girl. She looks like she's in her fifth year. She's got dark brown hair, or sorry, dark blonde hair, done up in a bun. She's kind of crouched beside the um, the portrait, writing stuff down in a notebook. What? You just see a student crouch below your dad's portrait. I'll just walk up beside her, start fourth looking year, at actually. it. Yeah, fourth year. Start looking at it. So she looks up at you, she's like, uh, hello. What are you... What are you doing? I'm just looking at the picture. What are you doing? So she she gets up, closing her notebook. She's like, um, I just like to come over here and write my notes and read. What's your name? I don't know, I don't have my NPC. Oh, this is a big one. It's a big one? It's a big one. Why are you fucking shit? No, I'm about my brother and how I saved Melvin's ass. You said she's fourth year. Dude, Melvin was so, just riding away. Fourth year. Absolutely. She says, my name is Raven Staghart. So she looks at you, she's like, what's, what's your name? <laughs> Does he say it? Don't fucking shook. Uh, my name's Finn. Do you have a last name, Finn? Apparently it's stag hard as well. So she looks at you surprised. She says, Do you actually is, is that actually your last name or are you just mimicking me? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, I didn't know my parents. But so I know this is my father. She looks at the portrait and she says, I know it's my father too, and I didn't really know him that well either. You didn't really know any of us that well. Any of us? So she says, well, I thought I was the last. But you have another brother. He's in seventh year. Let's just say our dad was a bit busy. Slow? <laughs> Second to murder, apparently procreation was his favorite. <laughs> well... That makes us family, yeah. So she scans you up and down. She's like, "No, it doesn't," and she walks away from you. <laughs> Raven, I'm gonna just stare at her as she goes away, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna analyze the fuck out of whatever she got on. <laughs> <laughs> everything, well, uh, everything. Where'd you, where do you say you hey. came from? The south or New Mexico? Hey. The inbred. South. The, isn't New Mexico the south? Yes, Amber. Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah just, either way, you know what? Just tell That's me, does she got anything of value on her? <laughs> oh, my her God. wand. Um, her she, yeah, her book is in her hands, though. She's got a carrying pouch, carrying probably textbooks, but her wand's holstered at her side. What the fuck? Nah, alright. I just, I gotta, I gotta go see a kid on that here. What a fucking cunt, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, this is recording. It's okay, don't worry about it. But seriously, what is. What I think is our this? audience is gonna know we're the frat boys of Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, but what is this? So, like, she's really gonna say that shit to me? Oh, okay. <laughs> Raven, bro. Whatever. So, I got a brother, too, huh? Okay. Seventh year. Jeez. He's also at the school? As far as you know, yeah. Fuck, so now I gotta find a brother out there as well. Okay, yeah, I go to see him. Making your way to the medical facility, Tiana is there sleeping pleasantly. You see, she's not moving around. She's got a smile on her face. All right, she's fine. Let's make sure everything's good. Her bedside's all fine, like nothing wrong. No. And then I'm gonna leave. Oh, like she's asleep with cuz and smile. Oh. Um, as you check her bedside, you see she's all good. You turn around, and the headmistress Izini is there, right behind you. Noiseless, like she didn't make a single noise getting behind you. She hovers over you, hunched over. Her, your head's here looking up at her. Her head's directly above you, creepily hunched over at you. Hands behind her back. She goes, hmm. 
and she begins to stroll away. So she says, in due time. Uh, what, what do you mean? So she just begins to stroll out of the room. God, fuck. God damn it. Why she gotta be like that? Can I tell what she means? Do I have to do an insight roll on this? Sure. What, what would I do on this? Is this like... What do you want to learn? What was her motive for saying that? Yeah. Like... If, if I can, 20 plus 8, if that even matters. <laughs> 30 for insight? Right, my insight is 8, yes. You've heard, you've heard men, gang leaders, scheme, the tone in their voice. As if they had some big plans ready for the future. Something devious. That tone was in her voice when she spoke in due time. You can see her motive for you is sinister. She has something very devious planned for you in the future. For me personally? For you personally. Fuck. That moment after hearing that, Kiana whispers pleasantly within her dream. She says, Mom, Dad, I miss you. And then you're kind of humming a song to herself. Wait, what? Kiana's just speaking out loud as she Wait, sleeps. Wait, who's humming? Kiana. Okay, I was like, okay. Got it. Continue, sorry. Yeah, no, she's just humming some song. Oh, so she's just pleasant? Just pleasantly sleeping. Life, as, right? <laughs> as you're having an existential crisis. So this headmistress is fucking trying to kill her. Okay, got it. Have I seen the headmistress go in and stuff as well, or no? Bro, you're you haven't really gone. seen her, no. You guys, you haven't really seen her. Her presence has been very anonymous. I don't even know her name, do I? Izzini. She didn't really know. She didn't introduce herself. Well, actually, she did at the initial meeting. She said, I'm headmistress Izzini. In the great hall, you guys, eat dinner. And enjoy Jeez. your meal what? before your you final what? curfew. Does Finn rejoin them, or does he go back to the dormitory? I'm going I'm to join them. I, I got to eat. You go back and eat. Bro, this joining dude's them. still homeless. He needs meals. <laughs> he needs meals. Something. His first healthy, nice meal. You guys eat. Melvin, all his confidence lost thanks to Arthur. Arthur, at the same time, his demeanor changed from being open back to being inclusive. You see the puckwudgy look mil militaristic now. As they stand more straighter, less open. The teachers even also look on guard. Krogast whispers something to all the teachers. They all look over at Patrice. And they begin to speak amongst themselves once again. The scoreboards become updated. Now. Wow. Horror, uh... Thunderbird has went up to 105 points. Damn! 105, okay. Then Broke 100. Ooh, first day. Not two shots. Ho uh, Puckwudgy has went up to... Where's that going now? Oh, no, first day. 10, You're right. Because we have seven classes in a day, yeah. 25, so they went up to 50. <laughs> Bro, your brother's fucking stupid. You got like a 50 point lead. We're doubled. <laughs> you don't know my brother. Yeah. Horned Serpent's at 30. I don't. <laughs> and Wampus, because of Aeana, went down by negative 25. They are now at 10. Oh Thunderbird is at 105 points. Wampus is at 10. Horned Serpent is at 30. Pukwudgie is at 50. Pukwudgie seems to be the ones catching up. You know, by... <laughs> not that much. <laughs> Thunderbird, absolute decimating. You guys eat your meals. Anything you want to discuss? No, I'm just silent eating, not talking to uh, anyone? anyone at all right now. I just want to eat... <clears throat> be thinking and shit like oh my god like 
that was crazy first day like sort of taking in all the classes and how Keanu just, <clears throat> like Keanu's just in the infirmary and shit I'm like don't you guys find it crazy how like the first day has been so hectic just throw it out there see if anyone says anything Melvin speaks up and he's like you know and he looks at Finn he's like I think you're leading us on more than there's more to you than you want us to believe I think you know more about your past than you think Oh, is he talking to me? Melvin's talking to you. Oh. But he's he's not confident or calm. He just kind of says it's depressing music. You know, I think there's just... You know, you're, you're not telling us everything, Finn. I don't know everything, Melvin. I don't know everything. Damn. You guys eat your meal. Pretty much silence. No one really wants to talk about Kiana. When your meal's over... I'm actually going to ask, does anyone... I'm getting some weird uh, feelings about this headmistress or what? Is she in the room? Not in the room. That's weird, isn't it? I'm going to ask everybody. That's weird. She's not here. Everybody well, else is here. I've only seen her minimally. And she introduced herself. She is a little grungy, though. Arthur's not saying anything? No. All right. Okay. Once again, another question with very little answers. You eat in silence. The teacher, Ember, makes an announcement that curfew is happening and dinner is over and that the students are go to their dur- dormitories in which they can study or sleep or engage in social activity. Well, I'll get up and then start walking towards the dorm. I was like, like let's go, guys. We have, we have some stuff to talk about. Finn, does Finn join them? Yeah. Melvin joins, kind of walking with his head down, not speaking to anybody either. Is Victoria talking at all, or is she? Saying? Victoria's not there. What happened to Victoria? She must be in the. She has to be back there. Probably. I don't even know. I was like, <laughs> he probably went. She dead? <laughs> no, she's in the dorm. Oh, okay, fuck. So you guys make your way back to the um, the Thunderbird dormitory. Climbing up the stairs, you feel your legs aching. You're tired from all the walking. You reach the common room where you see Victoria eating chocolate with a huge stack of books beside her bed. She looks over. Her mouth's still full. She's like, oh, I went to the library, guys. Found a lot of good books for our classes. Well, uh, thank you, Victoria. Has it, have you checked on uh, Kiana at all? You, did, you didn't have to go to see her, eh? She's like, yeah, I went to see her quick. She was fine. Just sleep talking. I want to see if there's a, a book pile about, uh, fuck, about, uh, oculency. Hmm. You look around, there's no books on oculency with, within the, uh, the dormitory. Mm. Possibly in the library? Well, we have curfew, I can't leave, yeah. I'm just, well, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm looking at her stack of books, what's there? Uh, a lot of stuff on charms. You see a book on Henry Ramore. Uh, you see a couple books on Makusa, History of Magic, Transfigurations. As we walk in, I want to ask uh, Arthur, you want to go right to the headmistress. Yeah, Finn's telling us that the headmistress is sort of creepy. I don't know who to trust you. Like, well, what's, what should we do with our information? Victoria nice. sits up, she's like, the headmistress isn't creepy. She's very, she's been known for her work on encouraging and enabling student success. Finn, didn't you say? She's like, wow, yeah. I really should stick with you. Apparently you see stuff that uh, nobody else believes. Yeah, and as she says that, I'm going to look down and be like, you really should. So she's like, it's not my fault. Puck Wudgie was coming at us because we snuck into the dueling no, room with we Melvin. we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. Melvin um, already said what you guys did. And let alone, Victoria, I would think better of you than to jeopardize the house. Whoa, whoa, this. whoa. She didn't do anything. She was she not anything. there, Finn? She wasn't. Then, Melvin, you lied to me. She stuck with me because you told her to. And you jeopardized her as well. She left as soon as we got there. 
She Doesn't wasn't matter. jeopardizing anything. She wasn't even there as far as we know. She should have stopped you from Anyways, jeopardizing I'm gonna the take, house. I'm going to take the book. I'm going to take the book on Transfigurations and Remor. On oh, Remor? Yeah. What does Patrice want to do? Wait, I, she's like, she said those are free to take anyway. Yeah. Which, what are the other ones? There's a bunch on Charms. Charms, Transfigurations, Defense Against the Dark Arts, um, Henry Remor, History. You see there's a couple books on potions as well as the... Um, uh, the Sasquatch Crisis. Yeah, no, just Remor and Transfiguration. That's all I'm going to take. Yeah. I want to grab Melvin. And then, uh, is there more of, like, a hidden area in, in the common room or where, like, no one really see? No, not really. But as you grab him, he's like, don't touch me. Don't come near me. Melvin, come with me. And he's like, no. I, I don't like you. I don't care what you like, but I'm going to teach you proper manners at the table. So Victoria stands up. She's like, you know, Arthur, I understand you come from the family of Greys. Then I'm gonna cu- I'm gonna cut her off right there when she said, "I'm like, you don't understand anything, Victoria." Doesn't seem like Melvin does either. You know who he bumped into? A- am I My gone brother. already, or am I still there? You, well, you, I guess you went to lay down in your bed. I don't have a yeah. bed. I sleep on the couch. You want to sleep on the couch, Doreen? Well, I sit on the couch. Is the I'll couch in the common room? room. So yeah, I'm still yeah. there. Yeah. I'm gonna say, hey. Melvin did something you couldn't. He beat that girl. Oh, <laughs> shit. She knocked you on your ass. He knocked her on her ass way quicker. Yes, and it happens. You get knocked down and you get back up right away. So what? He did something. Yeah. Congrats, so Ray. That's a solve, first for something. While I've been carrying this house on my back, leading uh, you and stopping you from doing stupid things. Tell me what you've done for our, us. Tell me what Melvin's done for us. Um, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. You know, Victoria stands up. She's like, you know, at least we've bonded in a way. Maybe we're, maybe you carry us, Arthur, but at least we feel comfortable. Uh, I wouldn't even say carrying us because Patrice did that stuff in Defense Against Dark Arts. Am I right? He did that. Yeah. You, you did the thing in Charms, right? Yeah. And then Transfigurations, what happened? You almost blew us all up? That's right. And then what did I do? Oh, I carried the team to victory in that one. I think you forget as well, because maybe you're still stuck up about yourself, but after I failed... Stuck up about myself? Have you not heard yourself talk? I've heard Grey more times in this past day than I've heard in my whole life, and that's a color. You know why you've heard that? It's because you don't even know anything about your history. You're right, I don't. I just learned I had a sister in the school. Did you know that? I'm not shocked. Apparently I have a brother as well. Not shocked. The round. I didn't know. (laughs) Yes. But I met your brother. Guess what? He's a treat. He's a treat. He's even better than my sister. Oh. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that because, again, I don't you know jack shit about your sister. I don't. I just know she's doesn't want me. Yeah, it doesn't seem like many do. Nor would I. But I didn't get to choose my house meetings. We were put in here. So I don't care... You guys want to bond? Bond against how you feel about me? I don't care. I don't need you guys. I don't need your friendship. So as you say that, you hear whimpering, crying. And when you look over the door, Kian is there, like, kind of hunched against the door frame, holding her side. And she's just crying. And she's like, can, can you all just stop? All I've seen since I came here is us as a family. But currently, when I look at each of us, all I see is just dysfunction. And it's heartbreaking because I know what we can become. We need to move past ourselves. So Melvin, Melvin looks over. He looks up at her. He looks up at you, and he's like, "I'll be better." We we need to unite more. I agree, Kiana, and that includes each contributions from each of us. I don't care, and I'm going to just go to my uh, bed. Wow! I just want to shake my head and just like have my go to my bed and just read my book. I'm actually going to read my book, but actually I'm going to have my locket in there and it's going to be opened. Kiana goes to her bed. (laughs) Moving, Victoria gets off the couch, taking some of her books with Kiana, moving into the the female area of the dormitory. Melvin goes to bed without saying another word. What do you two do? I ask, what book are you not reading? The Transfigurations one or the Romeo? 
Or the Romero one. What's the guy's name? Is Romero? No. Ramor. Ramor. Henry Ramor. Henry Ramor. Which one am I going to start with? I don't know yet. I got two. I got two. I don't know which one I'm going to start well, I would, with. I wouldn't mind dicking that Ramor one if you weren't using it. So I'm going to go peacefully read this in bed. My new night light. And I'm going to yeah, show if you, my if... like, little the light bulb thing. Oh, cool. The plant bulb? Nice. Yeah. Where would you get that from? I saw Pro Gast afterwards. That's pretty cool. If I could use that sometime, you could take this Ramor book for now. All right. Yeah, let me know if you need it. All right, here, take it. So we do a little more. Nice. Yeah, I'll get a little that. more for now. We'll trade off. Yeah, you I'll guys. Keep it in my, uh, yeah. Just yeah. Read, read. Cool. Rain droplets start to hit against the window. Thunder cracks. Lightning shoots across the sky, and the rain picks up over the night as you guys carry on. Eventually, all falling asleep. Unless. Yeah, I wanted to do something if everyone's falling asleep or whatever. I wanted to later on go up to where Melvin is, and I wanted to kind of like nudge him awake, but then like make sure he's not like loud or go like, or anything. Just kind of like cover this, his not mouth. The, yeah, not Very the like, interesting not the, like startle you... him. Yeah. Well, cover well, I... your mouth, wake you up. I <laughs> no, hate I'm you. Gonna, I'm gonna like nudge him. I, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> it's gonna creep him out anyways, no matter yeah. what. So I don't want him to be able to. And then I'm gonna be like, if it, does he wake up or anything? Yeah, he wakes up. His eyes are wide like a deer in headlights. I'll be like. Relax. I just didn't want him yelling or anything. I'll be like, look, let me teach you. You don't need to like me, but let me teach you the proper way. So he shakes his head. He says, no, I don't like you, and I don't want to teach you. I'd rather learn from Evelyn or our teacher themselves. You're just a pompous know-it-all who can't be part of this family. And I want nothing from you, and he rolls over. Okay, as he rolls over without him seeing, I guess, slight of hand, I'm going to sneakily put uh, the the seed under his pillow. So, yeah, you do that. Okay, and then I'll go back. That's I'll cute. be like, fine by me. Oh, you'd rather Evelyn teach him? That's fucking harsh. Did you heard what he said, man? Damn. That's true. That's true. You guys, Here's, the night collapses rough. around you. You all fade into sleep. You'll wake tomorrow to hear about a Sasquatch that escaped and punishment to the student who did it. The session ends here. Fuck.